Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on in to day five of our slime experiment game development. How are you doing? So, before we jump right into the, the game development and all that good jazz, I was thinking, I mentioned this at the end of last video, but since people on YouTube might not stick around the whole video, they might just pop in for the beginning, see where the game's at, that kind of stuff. I thought I would mention it here. So I was thinking I could make a Patreon. And the Patreon would allow you guys to you know, provide some money so that I have that money to put towards the game, to live off of, that kind of stuff. Because right now I'm just unemployed. Making games is not making any money for me. So it's really just all about my own pocket that stuff's coming out, which is why I'm using such basic things that I've actually just made in paint for that. So I was wondering if you guys would want a Patreon before I go through the trouble of making one and then having no one, like, uh, is it subscribe to it? Is that what they do on Patreon? Become a Patreon, I guess, is what it would be. Um, before I go through the trouble of making one that doesn't get any Patreons, I thought I would just ask and see if anyone wouldn't like to uh, do so. Um, or what I could do with the Patreon is I could have it be like I upload versions of the game as I'm working on them. Uh, for example, uh, last uh, day four, I could have built the game and had you upload that to the Patreon and you could download that and play the first two levels of the game. And then basically every time after uh, today, I can build the game at the end of the show and upload it to my Patreon, and then everyone who is a Patreon would be able to download it and play that version of the game. Quite simple. Um, that way you could, you know, play test it a bit. You could provide feedback, um, say if something, you know, is bugging out. Give me some examples for that, because, you know, just having one computer to work with um, isn't that great. Right. If, if I play test a game, I know how it works for me, but my computer's pretty beefy. So if other people play the game who have different computers, I can know for sure whether or not something works or does not work. Right. And if someone says they have an error, but I don't have the error, that means it's some weird hardware thing. And I'm not sure how I would fix that. But I don't know. So anyway, that's just my thought there. Um, I am also thinking about making another game now i've already started development of this other game because i had like a huge inspiration for like making this game and i was like this would be an amazing game i think anyway uh so i went ahead and i found a tutorial to start me on my way how to do it and i could probably also upload once the game is actually once that game is actually far enough in development to where i can like actually make a, a game build and whatnot so it's playable i could upload that to patreon as well since you're not seeing the development of that one everything you'll see kind of comes out of surprise whereas since you're playing a puzzle game you already know how to solve all the puzzles since you're watching it here if you are watching all of it but kind of just a thought um i'll kind of show you what that new game that i'm developing is in parallel with this game completely different genre um go ahead and go to my fire screen monitor here so this is the new game that i'm making in addition to slime uh, experiments i'm making this one called gunmancer isekai uh, premise of the game is you die in this world and then you get sent to another world which is like a fantasy world it's, it's the isekai experience in anime right but your special ability is you have guns yes so it's gonna be what i like to think of as a, a doom like set in a fantasy world i'm gonna add rpg elements to it I think that would be cool. So I'm not going to go fully and divulge everything that I have planned for it. But I think if I can pull this off, if I can get great enough artwork and like design it properly, make sure there's no like crazy things that make 
issues. I could have this game be a real success. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to hit play here and show you what I've got so far with this game. So, so far I can move around. Uh, let's go ahead and click in here so I can do that. So you can see I can move around this 3D space. It's going to be a 3D-esque game. I don't know if I'm going to use actual 3D models for it or just like 2D sprites, kind of like the original Doom had where it was like 2D sprite sprites coming at you. Anyway, you can see I have these, these cubes here, which don't really do anything. They just kind of get in the way and mark stuff. You can see I have a little bit of head bob going on. Um, and you can see I have a, a red cylinder over here, which is an enemy. And if you get close enough, it'll start following you. It doesn't do anything right now. Um, I actually think it does damage you, but once you do take enough damage, like here, if I go my player thing, you can see I uh, get moved around and stuff, but I think I killed him. <laughs> Hold on, let's, let's hit play and play it again. So I've implemented a, a weapon and armor system, as you can see in the bottom right here. And as I get touched, well, it's supposed to be damaging me, but maybe I didn't implement that right. Anyway, I can back up and I can hit the middle mouse button to shoot him, and he gets shot. So that's, that's neat. That's about all I've done so far. With, uh, this game. So I, I've been following a tutorial online to create a, a Doom clone, as they called it, and really the only thing I, I need to learn now from them is if they use the 2D models, how those would be implemented in a 3D space. Um, other than that, that's really all I needed to know, know from them was the movement and Really how to do 3D stuff because I've never done 3D stuff yet. So that, that's great. All right, let's get some music going. All right, and here's the game. So before we begin making the game, there are a couple of things that I added to our list to do. So before it was just make a bunch of levels, test the red slime touching the player, and now I've added Add alternate models for the lever and pressure plate when they're toggled on. Um, and then I have re-implement the new game button always. Add a new boolean and GM called new game to check for it. So that's what we're gonna do today. But first, let's implement the new game button once again. So we're just gonna go public bool is new game equals false. We're gonna hit that. Okay. So now, in the Game World Manager, rather than checking for this value first, we're gonna do if gm dot is new game equals true, we're then gonna do this one. Okay. So what that will do is it will allow us to always have the new game button up. I was thinking about it from like a like a potential speedrunner perspective. Having to go into the level select, select level zero, doesn't mesh well, right? You want to be able to hit that new game button, go straight into the game, and go from there, right? Without having to do any malarkey, right? So that's what I was going to do there. Uh, we also need to change in the main menu script in new game button, wherever it is. New game button, here we go. So we want to do gm dot is new game equals true. Oh, we should also in the uh, game world manager. After we instantiate that, we want to go um, gm dot is new game equals false. Just to retoggle that on there, no reason not to. So now we have that set up, so we have new game and yada yada, but we also need to come up here to the awake script and load the data. We basically just want to remove the setting new game to false. That way it's always true, so it's never gonna go away. And that will also really help in playtesting because now that uh, 
the new game button will always be there. I can always test a new game if I have to, which I don't think I should, but cross that one off. Heck yeah. All right. And so our next one will do three, which is to alternate models, which literally minutes before stream, I added these. So let's go back here to the project menu. And let's go to assets. And we're just gonna bring in our level on, or lever on and pressure plate on things here. So lever on, pressure plate on. I'm gonna go ahead and up the quality of these. Uh, it's not multiple. There we go, gotta fly. All right, now go to our prefab, because I think all the lever and pressure plate buttons are closed. So open up that. Did that open up a new window? It did. I'm gonna close out of this window. Okay. I don't know why it opened up a brand new Unity window, but whatever. We also need the uh, pressure plate one. Okay. So we're just going to real quick serialized field, uh, sprite, and we're going to call this one pressure plate on. And we're going to make a new one called pressure plate off as well. Cool. In the lever script, we're going to do the same thing. So, you know what? I'm just going to copy these two. Paste that here. We're going to call this lever on and lever off. Go ahead and save real quick. Let's go ahead and open up the lever prefab. There we have access to our stuff here. So this is the lever off. And this one is the lever on. It's a very subtle change for the lever, so I'm wondering if it's actually going to matter, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and save that. And then next, let's go to prefabs, and we'll open up the pressure plate one. And then we just do the same thing over here. So this is the pressure plate off. And this one is pressure plate on. Basically, pressure plate on gets a little bit brighter, as does the, uh, the red piece on the lever. So... We'll have to see what it looks like in the game world. Can't really say for sure how it looks here. But I just wanted some indication that you have actually used them. Now that those have been dragged into there, let's go ahead and in the reset lever, we need to do uh, this dot, uh, what would be, get component, Sprite renderer dot sprite equals lever off, I think. And then we just want to do the same thing kind of down here. So if it's activated, we want to do lever off. If it's not activated, we want to do lever on. So that way we can do that and then we'll just I think we'll just get rid of this since we don't need to flip it back and forth since the, the image is now like that. Which means I can get rid of all of this as well. It just shortens our code up a little bit. All right, next for the pressure plate. If we're resetting the pressure plate, we want to do, basically let's just do the same thing. So we're going to do pressure plate off. And then let's see, on enter 2D. Okay. I think we just want to go like this, because anytime anything enters it, we want to turn it on. And then anytime anything exits it, we want to turn it off. Let's save that. And then let's uh, load up a game, I guess. We'll specifically load up our testing space. Unload that, please. 
down here to our main camera. So I'm going to drop down our pressure plate here and our lever here. And we're not really going to do anything with them yet. So these should be up here. All right. So I think also I need to place down a slime. Because if I don't, then, uh, well, wouldn't be able to do anything. So we'll just flip that. Oh, hold on. Those uh, were not the prefabs. Not bad. These are. Okay. Now let's try that again. Okay, so we're just going to go up here. If we get an error because there's no variable to change, but we're also getting an error there. Fine. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add a, well, we have to actually put something out on the field. Then we can drag this over to lever, we're just going to go object to change. And I think the pressure plate as well um, is one object. But all the thing does is it just, no, switches it on and off, right? That should be enough to check that. Hit play again and check it out. Okay, so now if I go over here, it's also giving me an error. I'd like to manipulate, but it's one object. Right? Okay, so you can see, Pressure plate kind of glows a little bit, which kind of indicates that it's been activated. Up here, the lever. You can barely see the like red thing change a little bit. But also, I think that the lever moving is also an indication of it turning on anyway, so that's fine. Whatever. Let's go ahead and delete these. Save, and then we want to make this our primary scene. Okay, thank you. All right, so <coughs> I can go ahead and close the pressure plate and the lever scripts once again. And we can go ahead and cross this off. So that is done. And you know what? We might as well just right now quickly test the red slime. So first of all, what we want to do is get our level prefab here. Perfect. And so we have our canvas, that. Um, do I need to remove auto talking or will it be fine? I don't know. Anyway, our spawn point is in the middle, but let's move it back here. End level, we're just gonna move over here. It doesn't matter right now. Let's move our red slime up here. Move him down there. Move the prefab right there. Cancel. We're gonna unprefab this. Unpack. There we go. Throw him under items, and then we need a spawn point for him as well, right? So create empty red slime spawn. This is just a test. It. We're not gonna do much with this. So I'm just gonna move him up here no matter where he goes. So that way we can test to see if the level resets when that happens. So the enemy needs to have that there. And the spawn needs to have that there. And we need to have a cage up here as well. And we need something to trigger the enemy. So I think having a pressure plate just right here would be fine. And then is one object. An object to change would be the red slime. No, it would be object to manipulate, right? I don't know. We'll just try this. There I am. Okay. That didn't work. 
we do want is one object checked. It's still not working, so let's just move that over there. No? Okay. All right, pressure plate, you win. Let's open your script up again and see which one manipulates the red slime. So enemy is, is one object is true. And then we're manipulating. Oh no, we just find the enemy with tag, enemy. But it's in object to manipulate, yeah. So that should work. Am I getting an error for some reason? Object reference in fixed update is not a thing. And then it says index out of range, which is start talking, of course. That's better. And then we have variable cage is not set in red slime script. Of course, of course. So red slime needs his cage. And there we go. Okay. Forgot how much stuff I had here. So he touches me, and then it... It's there. Yeah. The trick is going to be figuring out exactly how to get it back in the cage, since the hitbox is a little bit weird for the red slime. But we can hit this again. Mm hmm? Hey, bud. Why is he moving? Uh. Okay. That's peculiar. You know. What if I make the cage part of the red slime? Right? Anyway, we can cross this one off. We're gonna rename it to attach cage to red slime. So what I mean by that is we can take this cage and attach it to the red slime. Uh, what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead, we'll get rid of that. And then level prefab. I'm just gonna let's just put a text in here. Hello, smile. Okay. So in the level reset script, we're going to remove the enemy cage now. And we have to do this. Okay. And then we need to go into the prefab red slime and add a cage onto him at zero, 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 and then change it because we need it to be right about here. Okay. And then on the red slime, the cage object, we will move over to here. Let's save. That has cleaned some stuff up a bit here. Let's test this out now. Hello. Okay. Now if I hit this, he goes back into the cage. However, it's moving still. Although his moving is turned off, so I don't know why. It is moving. Let's pause again. Let's look in our red slime script. So. We call fixed update player allowed to move is moving is true. That. Is it because I did not set the velocity equal to zero? 
when I reset him. So it would be the what is it again? RGBD two D dot velocity equals vector three dot zero. That should stop movement when we reset him. Let's try this out. Okay. He's moving, he's moving, we reset him. Excellent. Yes. Okay. So let's look here at our other error. So our error that we're getting when we first start the match, or the mission, I was trying to say, is this. The GM not allowed to move is false because it, it can't be done here. Because we are... Wait, do we not? Oh. We don't check for GM for the fixed update at all. Okay, we do, we mark it there, but I guess fixed update could happen before the other update. Let's just see if we get the same error again. We don't, excellent. Love to see it. Whoosh. So the pressure plate is only letting it go off once. But why? Let's look at the pressure plate logic, just to check and see what happens here. So, when we reset the pressure plate, is touched as false, is spawned as false. Okay. Is one object not true? We do that. So it is doing this. Okay, so maybe it's not the pressure plate that's at fault. Will the red slime script start movement? We do start movement. And the cage gets set to false. Okay, is moving set to true. We then do that, which... It should... Oh, hold on, let me check something. We hit that and he starts moving. We hit this again. He doesn't start moving? Okay, let's do a couple of things here. Some debug statements. So debug dot log. Start moving. Slime. Okay. We'll do that there, and then in pressure plate, we want to do debug.log. Um, has been triggered. Boom. Okay. So we hit this. To un pause and play it again, do I? Yes, I do. Okay, at least for that. Do it again. But why? It's like, but it's sensing me going in. But it's not going into the tip statement here. So debug.log is one object. OK. 
Okay. And then let's do a. Well, we know we're not getting into here, so let's just check this. Debug dot log is enemy. Okay, so let's test that out. Hit that, let me hit it again. We have is one object, is enemy, but is spawn does not hit? Huh? We're calling this reset level. For each game block, for each pressure play to reset PP. Debug.log. Oh. Nope, I'm just an idiot. An idiot who did not drag the pressure plate into the pressure plate list so it wouldn't reset. It's always the simplest thing. Touch. There we go. Okay. Now we have a working slime that is red. Finger guns. Okay. Go ahead and remove our debug statements that we no longer need. It's like something's wrong. What is happening? Why is it not working? And it's like, oh, I'm just an idiot. Okay, now we have Hatch Caged Red Slime completed. All right, so now all that there's left to do is to make more levels. Rock on. So, our previous level, if you remember, level two, we actually open up our levels, look at level two. Yeah. It was a simple introduction to moving the blocks. All it was to that, that's all we had to worry about. And in our auto talk, we explained that, hey, blocks can be pushed. Okay. Excellent. So I think now we want to introduce the immovable block and kind of create some obstacles, right? So let's go to the collider tile map. First of all, what we're going to do is once again, create our bounding box to keep the, uh, I was going to say enemy, but it's a slime inside. You know, maybe I should just like, Save the prefab with this. But I guess I will change it every 10 levels to a different color, right? Yeah. It's fine. Okay. So, spawn point. We're gonna have it over here once again. End level. Hmm. Let's put it up here this time. Let's be a little different. Ooh. There we go. Okay. And how do we want to lay this out? Well, I suppose what I could do is just add a bunch of immobile blocks to make it look like they could move through them, but they can't. But I think that would give it away a little bit too easily if there's all a bunch of red blocks, right? We just want like one or two of them to begin with. So let's go ahead and we're gonna make another like tunnel type thing here. 
And then I need... Where were the tunnel ones at? Right here. Right. Boop. 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 Nice. Okay. And then we'll take a movable block. I'm just going to put it right there. That way we can move our block. And then let's click off this real quick. Then I'm going to put not a movable block there, but one there. That way they can get out still. It'll push against this, hit that, and not be able to go further than that one. That'll kind of show, oh, the uh, block cannot be moved further than that. I understand. I'll also put one up here and one up here. That way the movable block gets caught in between them. Yes. Just to be absolutely sure. Uh, okay, just making sure there's no Hitbox issues where the block is gonna hit something there. In fact, let's move all of these down a few pixels just to have it nice and centered there. And then also put them in the items thing here. Okay. So we have our lovely move of a block. And then let's go ahead and add a little bit more to this level so that it's not just pushing a single block, right? We also want to add a couple more movable blocks, I think. So let's make it like this. They're gonna move this block, and then they can either move this block or this block to go up or down, right? It gives them some options. Makes them think that they're better or whatever. Okay. And then. After doing that, we will have another immovable block. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter for this, does it? Down here it does, though. We'll put one there. Then we can move it down. It'll hit that. Cool. Um, and then after that, this is what happens. You don't pre-plan. Pre you just kind of think of stuff on the fly. So this one goes up to there, this one goes down to there, it hits the thing, you're able to go over here and over here. So let's create, huh. let's create this here and this here, and then that down to here, up to here, a little bit like this. I'm just kind of thinking about this on the fly, so I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I'm just kind of making stuff happen. Then we'll grab our solid color, fill in this area. Oops, not that. Oh. And then that one, and then that one. We can grab some more solid blue and just do that. That. Go. Okay. That's the level. Level. Okay. So, what we'll do next is let's go ahead and first of all select that so I'm not seeing the tile map a bunch. Okay, so we come down here. We are then given a red block and a movable block. And that can go to here. Then we're given another one. And that can go to here. And we're given another one. Just to kind of make things alternate, right? And then Maybe we trick the player, or at least think about tricking the player. Two movable blocks there. 
think it'd be better if they were opposite, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh... Move this one here. Move this one here. And this one here. And this one here. And then this one here. And this one. Okay. So, how is it going to work? Player comes in, they move this block all the way into here so it can't be moved again. They then move these blocks, they can either push them up or down, doesn't matter. Come around to here, where they have to push this one in. They can get up here, go over here, push this one in, go down here, over to here, push that one out. Then they're here to decide, oh, do I want to push the left one or the right one up? Obviously, you want to do the left one and leave the right one alone. Because if you don't, you'll block your exit and have to restart the level. Hello, well. Kind of a little, little, little troll there, right? Kind of like if you're uh, if you're testing the slime, you are checking to see if the slime just likes pushing blocks, or if it actually knows how to get out and is thinking about giving up, right? So that's why we're testing that. Because if the slime pushes that block, obviously it's dumb. And the slimes aren't intelligent, they just like pushing blocks. If it pushes that one, slime is intelligent and doesn't just like pushing blocks, right? So kind of the, the thinky think logic there. All right. So now we just need to talk here. We should also need level 1-3. Uh, 1-3, one one level number 3. I think that's how I've been naming them, right? Just check here. 1, 2, 2, yep, OK. We also. just realized I need to make spawn points and items for all of those now I am smart okay well I'll we'll just take all the movable blocks here that's all the movable ones yeah okay I'm gonna drag all these into the item respawns and that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So create empty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now we just move them to where we uh, need them to be. So here's one, here's two, here's three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. All right. Now I can just go bloop, bloop, and bloop. bloop. There we go. All right. So now we got the spawn points. We got the items in there. All saved and stuff. Okay. So let's add 10 text for right now. And I'm gonna save once again. What did I have for the text in this one? It was move items out of your way, yada yada. Okay, so let's do something about. Oh, sometimes you need to plan ahead. We'll see. Sometimes there are multiple things in your way. You will need to choose the best way to get past them.
I'm going to use that line I said earlier. So let's see if you just enjoy pushing blocks or if you are actually thinking. Okay, we'll do that. Happy about three. Okay. I think that will be level three. Uh, let's hit play, test it, make sure it works. And then we leave. But what happens if I reset the level? An error occurs. Oh. I had a pressure plate in there. What? What, 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 what do you mean? The variable item respawn and level reset doesn't exist anymore. What do you mean? Oh. I forgot how I did this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, because I don't move them back, I just delete them. Right. Okay, let's try this again. Reset level. Gives me an error again. Because I didn't fucking gonna sign pressure plate again. There. Worked that time. Let's just make sure that we remove this time. Okay. Easy peasy. So we know that the level reset works now. Excellent. Which means we can go ahead and go to levels. And move this one down to here. Cool. Oh, I should rename this. So it has the same formats of the ones that are in order. Okay, so I think... Wasn't there a area that I had to drag like the next level into or something? I know there's the... Uh... Where is that one at? Damn it, I forgot. Uh, it's uh, uh, in the game world, right? Game world manager, levels. Level three, enjoy. One, two, three. But there was a, there was an area that had the next world in it, right? Like next level was, uh, right? That's end level. That's where it was. Current level, one, three. Next level, one, two. We do the same thing here. This end, oops, open up level two, end level. Go, save. Although, I actually need to do that in here, don't I? Level number three, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, that. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. That is our next level completed. Level three. Not bad. Not great either. It's just a level. Let's go ahead and remove this. And we will create our next one. Very quick. All right. So, first of all, we want to remove this prefab. 
Name this one level 1-4. One mm -hmm. uh, uh, buttons. Oh god. Oh god. What am I doing? There we go. Okay. I have like an existential crisis there or something. So 10 array size there. And for end level, we're going to copy in the current level game object. Change this to level 4. Okay. And then let's once again start with the thing we love to do every single time. Create our tile map area. Boosh, boosh, baby. Okay. So. Now we want to step it up a little bit and actually have there be a little uh, thinking going on. So let's go ahead and make a end area up here. And let's move our end level point up to that. And our spawn point, we'll have it be up here this time. Okay. All right. So I think what I want to do is I kind of want to have three or four room areas. So if I do like here and like I do the opposite, don't I? Here and here. Then let's grab this one. We can go boop. We can go boop. Or do I need that one to be there? Hmm. Hold on. If I do another one like right here. And then go move like that, yeah. I think I want to scoot this one over one though. There we go. A little more even there. So I'll have them kind of go through this course and do some stuff. Okay. Now I can switch this away. And let's make sure our spawn point is in a proper area right here. Let's make it kind of centered. Cool. All right. So, using our movable blocks and our if movable blocks, we want to go through here. But I want it to be more than just a specific one way to get through. Well, I want there to be one way to get through, but I want it to look like there's multiple, multiple, but if you do push a block, it's going to cause some issues. So let's go ahead and start by putting this one here, and we'll put a block here as well. And then let's add a bit to the tile map. This time we're gonna jut out this way. So there's only one way to push this block. And you know what I'll do? I'll do some sneaky sneak stuff right now. Okay, so we're gonna leave a gap here. So they need to push it at least down to here in order to get past. So we're gonna put two blocks here, right? That way they can push it down and straight through here. And then let's put a block here. So they could just go all the way down, right? 
just move that block all the way down there. However, if they do, they will be unable to get through this area. So we'll do something like that. That one there. Got a movable block, put it there. One here as well. For the sake of things. They're gonna push that one down. You know what? Let's remove that one. Right? That'll give them a little more room to think, like, oh, maybe I can somehow maneuver this block and push it somewhere else or something, right? But no, they're gonna have to push it right here and not further, because if they do push it further, they won't be able to get through to here to push this block. And this block, it's a red herring. It's gonna mess them up. Because if they push that one down, they're gonna block this path, which they need to use in order to I don't know. Look. If I put a block either there, it's not gonna work. It's not enough space now, damn it. <sighs> Actually, what am I doing? I can move those up. Because they just need to put it there, and then they can move that way, right? Yeah, okay. And then I can move everything else. These guys. One as well. Okay. They push it down here. They move around through here. And they can push this one down one. And then they can also push it over one as well once they get down through here. Hmm. Hmm. God. Who who would have thought that making a puzzle game's puzzles would be so thought inducing, right? <laughs> no. So we're gonna push it down here. We're gonna think which one do I want to do? You know what? Maybe I just delete this one. Maybe just get rid of it. And put this guy here. Right? So that way they can push it all the way down. But then they'll be like, oh man, I screwed myself over, or whatever, you know. I don't know. Then, we can take... Does setting up default parent I mean if I drag something over here, it's gonna... Yep, okay. My question, perfect. Oh, I had another mobile block there. Hold on. All right. Cool. So now if I add more items, it's going to do this stuff. Hmm, yes. Exactly, Ryle. Puzzling. Starting a puzzle game is quite puzzling. Hmm. All right. So we're going to move this one down here, which will allow them to move over here. Or they're going to push it too far and be like, well, screwed myself. And then they have to go over here, push this one down. They have to get it to here at least so they can get out through this one. Let's put a block here. So if they push this down here, they'll be able to go to the left here. And they can also push it down one to the left there. So... Hmm, curious, I'm curious. Yeah, I have an idea. Let's take this block, move it over here. We'll take the movable block that is this one and move it over here. So what they might be tempted to do is push straight down on this block until it hits this block and allows them to move this block, but then it would hit here and there, and then they'd be no longer able to progress. Which means they have to do one at a time, right? 
Excellent. Okay. And now, if they push that one down, it'll hit here. And then they have all this space. So I think I'll make this one go here. So that I have to push this one down to here. I then have to go around over to here, push it over to there, and then they can get out. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna grab those, and while I'm at it, let's move him there. There we go. Okay. So that's part one done. Let's see here. I have three more paths to go now. Why don't we start with a block here? That they'll have to push. Push, push. Right there's far they'll have to move it and they can get up one but let's block that so they have to push it over to here at least or we do that give them plenty of space to move and then make it so they can go either up here or up here and build a little bit of layer here and here over to here right so they can go either up here over here a lot of block here the block here they can choose which path they want to go on this one right and so they can choose to go up the straight path, which will have a block. Then we'll have a block up here, so they have to get rid of that block and they can't move it any further. Same with over here. Should I do that? Well, it's fine, I think. They can push those up, which will end them up going there. And then I want the player to like ruin themselves, right? I want them to think, oh, this is a big brain play right here. I'm going to do this, but then it's not the right play to make. So what if I make it necessary to go through this as a loop, right? But they're like, oh, I'll just take this path by pushing this all the way in the corner. What I want them to do is push this one here, go up here, go down here, push this block back, but that wouldn't do anything since there's no like other elements. I could use that later on when I introduce pressure plates and stuff, but for now it's just moving blocks around. I think I want the next couple levels to be just moving blocks around before we introduce anything else. Right? Let's do that. They can move those blocks up. And we'll get there and there. Then they can move them either this one over to get up through here, or this one up, or, or I can put like a block right there. So if they're not paying attention, and I think they can get up that way. They'll be like, oh, I'm stuck. Wait, no, that wouldn't do anything. Is that what it? You'd have to move left anyway. Yeah, right, right. I, mean, I was about to be stupid there. I'm stupid. Hit Z. Okay, so.
It almost lines up to there. Means the player moves here. So I guess I make this go here. Where you push a block that seems obvious the block doesn't move, but the level does. That's interesting. I feel like... I feel like there's been things where you move the level. Like other level puzzle games where like you move the level. But yeah. Fortunately the way I have things set up, I don't think I'd be able to implement that since the camera doesn't move. And these are all like blocks. Unless I make everything out of like movable blocks instead of actually stuff like that. I don't know. It's fine. Okay, so. They push that one up there. They then go through here. Easy. They go through here. They then push this one over to there. Push that one up there. And then it has to go at least there. It means they automatically get out. Whatever. What if I do this? Yeah. Okay, so you come up here. You're gonna go left to go up here, which will add another block here. We'll do something special here. Um, Actually, pushing up wouldn't do anything. There. Not really do anything, huh? Yeah, that's stupid. You're here. You have that block here. Of course, do nothing and call that the end of that little area. So, with so much limited space here. The only thing I can really do is put a block here, and you push there, and you just go up through there. But at that point, you might as well just leave through there, right? So we'll just do that. And then over here, we'll have them start. I'll push a block here. some immobile blocks. And let's add another one here. This one's going to go down, down. You're going to push that one here, and you're going to push these two, so they go down to here, so you can get it through there. But actually, let's... Fluff it around. I want to have some extra room to work with here. So let's take that. Move that one over here. Take this one here. Move it over here. 
put this one here, move it over here. So now you push them down. You can then push one over to the left or to the right. So you can then get to this block. So you go down, 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 which will then pile one, two, three. I kind of want to trick the player into pushing these blocks and then like pushing one in, but I want them to have to actually push all of them down. I'm just not sure how I would go about doing this. So if I did this, make four. I think I'm trying to do too many complicated things, but the problem is, because I'm not using the other features like pressure plates and pitfalls and stuff like that, having extra blocks doesn't matter. So it's literally just you need to push stuff out of the way. Right. So right now, if you push all four of these blocks just straight down, they would just get one, two, three, four, right there. Nothing special. Right. But if you push three of them down, one, two, three, and you push one over, and then you go three down, you would be able to get out. Let's see. So you push this one down, obviously. You can't get out, so you have to push it down again, which pushes those there. You either have a choice to push them down again, or to go around and push one in, which is the solution. And you have to go back around, push them down again. So I want to... Again, it doesn't matter. Because as soon as they like... No, hold on. Does it matter? You push that one in, but then you can just go down anyway. You push that one, which goes there, and you push these, which go there and there. And you can just go... and leave. I wanted them to have to go like back around and push them down again. Well... We can use that later, that's fine. Right now they have to go push, push, go around here, push, or so they could just push all of them down. Um, yeah, but if they push all of them down, then they're stuck, so it doesn't matter. So that, that's fine. That'll, that'll be the puzzle for that one. I guess. Three. Okay. So the last leg here. How do I want to do this? Let's do another like block the exit kind of thing. So there's one, here's two. You can put one here, block that, block that, block that. Okay. And we're going to block this. Let's hold off for now. So, if you push these two blocks all the way, they're going to get stuck here and you won't be able to exit the level. Right? However, you need these two blocks to go down. How about this? Put that one there, that one there. All right, let's give ourselves a little bit of buffer room. And then let's grab this block and move it over. 
Then we'll grab the movable blocks here and here. Push them over here. That way the same thing happens. It's just we have an extra block to deal with here. Okay. Okay. Let me think about this. We push these two down here, and we need them to push another block out of the way. But that won't do anything. Because again, we don't have anything, we don't have any need for extra blocks anywhere. We can't pull the blocks, but I can't make any holes. So I wanted to do something like, there's a, a little box here, and we have to like push it like to here. But like, like if it did something like this, have that box be there, and then you push all those down there, like move it, not necessarily there, but. Mm. push those two and then we maybe we do something like hmm. Hmm. so we push those two so only like one of them is sticking out there right that wouldn't do anything for us, right? Or would it? What if... So we push those two up to here, you can then go this way, and push that block over that way, right? So yeah, let's do that. So you push them up to here, and then... You have to go around over to here and push that block that way so that you can get over to here. And do what? I guess let's put a block here. Then we'll put a block here. And we can go one over here and one here. Oh, because that's passable on the left. I want the player to have to do the right side. So they push that one up, they can go over here, push that one up, and they can then push this one over to there to then escape. block here because that way if the player comes over and does this one when they come up here go over here go over here push that one in push that one down go over here push that one up then they'll be kind of stuck they won't be able to do anything else right screw themselves yeah but
Yeah. Okay, we can do that. Then they go over here, and they push that one in. Push that one in. They can just go up there. Right. I guess the only thing I can do right now would be to grab this block. I said grab this block. I said grab that block. Move it down there. Because I think potentially they can get through there, but they can't. Okay. Let's go with that. That's our second puzzle. Alright. Then we're going to need to grab all of these guys. Let's grab all the immovable blocks first. Because there's so many of them. Okay, let's throw these up into here. Okay, nope, I missed one. And all these movable blocks will move up into here as well. There we go. And apparently I missed one again somehow. Okay, so we have how many movable blocks? We have 17. Okay, make sure there's no more hiding up here. Okay, 17. Gotcha. So, let's copy these things over here. Um, so we have item to respawn. I think I can just go 17 now and it'll copy that there. Hell yeah. Rock on, brother. All right. Now the spawn points. Also, I didn't set the 1-4 uh, and then level 4 there, so let's remember to do that, shall we? Okay. Now we create empties. 17 empty. Block spawn. Yay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now I can just go until it's 16. There we go. Cool. And then I will just grab this, lock that here, roll back down, copy all of them, because they don't need to be in the right place quite yet. Bloop. Okay, and now we just start moving them all where they need to go. So there, 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 there. There's 11, here's 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. There we go, cool. All right, let's hit save. Minimize the items here. Now let's do a play test of this little level. You can even I remember how I did all this now. Okay. So, we can push this down. Down to here. We can then push it down again. But it doesn't do anything. We're stupid. Also, I just realized that the uh, text box is actually in the way for part of the puzzle. So if they keep talking, we would uh, lock that, wouldn't we? Damn. have that. Show me the text box. Oops. Uh, okay, so I selected on that one. Show me the text box. Fuck. Yeah, of course, that's how that's going to be. 
What if I make the text box like this? Take the dialogue, stretch it into here. Hello world. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. That looks better for now. I think I'll just have to like get used to not putting anything in this little area. Might be the best course of action, to be honest. Okay, let's go ahead and close these before I forget and they're always open now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this again. So, I to push the blocks down. Oh no, I got it. I'm stuck. I can't get through. Got to restart the level. Okay. Move that one down to here. Go over here. Move this one down again. I can go over here and move this one over here. Because I can then go down to here and decide do I want to go up or to the left? Ooh, or to the right? Ooh, don't think it matters. You can do either one. Because this puzzle is not that advanced. Okay, now this one, you have to go down, down, push this one, down, down, out of the way. All right, and then for this one, we can't do that, so we have to move these ones up all the way. And we can't just squeeze through there, unfortunately, so we have to go over there, which I then screwed up because it's too much, eh, eh. Oh man, I really screwed the pooch on this one. Right, but anyway, we can then move those two over. Okay. <laughs> it works! Yay! I have to keep in mind the size of the blocks you're moving. Or else you're uh, gonna have a bad time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Back down to... File map, there we go. Okay. I want to move the spawn point just up ever so slightly. So I spawned like right there. That was weird. Okay. So I think we're done. And level yep, perfect. Okay. Make a prefab. Level one three. Done. We open up level one two. Click on end level. Next level is one four. Boosh, boosh. Yeah. Let me just double check on all these that they are. No, I got it. All right, cool. Although we do need the talking. Yes, yes, right. Well, I don't need this anymore. Let's just add the talking in here. Okay, so let's see. So the previous line of talking was let's see if you like pushing blocks or actually. I think. So then we'll say. So, or it, since you are capable of thought, we'll say, it seems to be a random chance for an intelligent slime. And a unintelligent slime. It is almost like there are two different species of slimes. Though there is no way to tell them apart. As far as I can tell, aside from these experiments, anyway. So, the reason for this dialogue is 
he found out that we're dealing with an intelligent slime. So he knows that we're able to, you know, solve puzzles and whatnot. And the reason I mentioned two different species, there's intelligent and unintelligent slime, it's because in my previous games, when I've been setting lore from all the games that are all interconnected and they all have basically the same, like, lore and background and stuff. Uh, in I'm Just a Slime, we established that there are two kinds of monsters. There are the intelligent ones and the wild ones. The wild ones are just the, the ones that go out and attack humans and everything. And then there's the intelligent ones, which make communities. The wild monsters still attack their intelligent monster counterparts. So it's basically like there's the wild monsters are like, uh, I think of them as like zombies for humans, right? Like zombies are technically human, but they are like unintelligent, wild, feral things that just want to kill everything, right? So the scientist or whatever you have here, He's been picking up slimes, capturing them. Some of them have been intelligent. Some of them have been wild. And he's kind of experimenting to figure out if he can determine what's the difference in all that and whatnot. And he's determined that yeah, there does appear to be two different species, because some of them are really intelligent, some of them are not, yada yada. So that's the basic premise of these experiments going on right now. <clears throat> Some of you seem to even understand my speech. Fascinating. I think that's how you spell fascinating. We'll end it there for now. Okay. So we don't want it to go too long because the player could easily finish it in like a couple of seconds, right? But I do need to test it now and see if we are getting anywhere here. Was that? Okay, good. Wanted to make sure I wasn't typing that somewhere weird. But nope, it's right here. Okay. So... I do need to test that out real quick, though, just to make sure that it fits the newly changed text box here. So, let's see. You are capable of thought. Excellent. Yep. I need to make it wider. Text box. Oh, we gotta change it in here. And this. Text box. We're just gonna stretch it across the entire length of the uh, thing here. I mean, I could do a trigger like that, but I don't have to add more script and stuff like that, and like a script that's specifically for like certain things happening, but meh. For those of you who, who can't see chat because you're watching on YouTube or something, uh, Ryle suggested having fascinating trigger as the slime collides with the last pushable block, which is just unfortunately uh, not something I want to implement right now, because I could like make it so it does happen um i would have to add like a collider onto the block and then as soon as the slime touches that collider it triggers uh, a script that says something you know like uh in my previous game i had a uh a script called say on trigger which is when they you know hit the uh hit a hit the trigger for it, it pops up and says something, and then it just disappears automatically real quick. Um, but I don't think I'd have many instances to use that here. I mean, I could, but I think it's just easier to have everything auto-talk right now. And if they hit it as they exit the level, that wouldn't really work either, because remember, 
the level gets destroyed like immediately when they touch it, right? As soon as the next level is done building, this level gets destroyed. And as soon as we hit that uh, end level, the loading screen pops up, or it should. Um, <laughs> if it's a slow enough computer, uh, it'll pop up. And that means you wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. But yeah, I mean, it's a good suggestion. And it's something that I could implement in the future if I, if I wanted to, like if I do have like a level that's long enough that takes enough time to get through that uh you know i could warrant it but i just kind of want the, the scientist to be like monologuing the entire time as the player is like doing the thing so he's just like talking and whatnot rather than like making observations or whatnot so he kind of like talks about the previous room and how they did and then like just rambles about stuff for a moment i don't know that's my thought process anyway let's hit play again and see how the dialogue text shows up then we can since you are capable of thought, excellent. The next one's a little long, so we have to see if... Okay. I think the second line is the longest, so this should take care of that problem. Okay. So level 1-4 is going to have kind of a... Uh, weird thing. Right, so level 1 4 is gonna have a weird text box, because I had to do that. I'm not remaking all this. <laughs> yeah. Like I understand what you're saying, Ryan. Um I don't really want the fascinating to show up right when they hit the last block, because it, it's basically just him talking about, you know, and he says as like an offhanded comment, some of you even seem to understand speech, which is fascinating. Uh, he's not saying fascinating to him moving the block. He's saying it's fascinating that some of them understand speech, right? Which is his own like dialogue. Okay, another level done. Yeah, nice. Next level, prefab. Fill this baby up here. Okay. Level one five. One dash five. Go. Five. One dash five. Then we want to make this the default parent. Once again. Um, make 10 messages there. And then make the tile map once again. This is not going to get tedious at all. Wait, why is there an error right here? Editing tile maps in prefabs will have better. Oh, right. We have to unpack tile. Here we go. All right. Go ahead and make all this. Doop. Okay. And then we'll add an exit. How about down here this time? Why not? Sounds like fun. Don't it? Then we can move the end level marker down to here. And the player spawn point I'll just throw up in this corner right here. Okay. So, what do we want to have for level 1-5? I, I, again, I, I want to have some more block puzzles for a little bit before I explain any other new things like levers or pressure plates or pitfalls. I think the next thing we're going to introduce is pitfalls, just because that way I have something to do with like the, uh, the blocks, right? They interact with the blocks, so it makes sense. Um, let's see. Ha ha ha. I wonder, is there a limit to how many blocks you can push? If I were to go like one here and then do that, that. So I wonder, they all have gravity on them and mass. So would they like go to the point where it slows down? Just for size, check that out.
Okay. Let's leave a little room for them to actually move. And then let's hit play. I just want to see. I'm just curious. Okay. Here we are. Let's push, push, push. So it does seem I'm getting slower. Very slow. So all the mass is just kind of there. So I think if I added like five to ten more, I might actually stop. But yeah, it gets very slow. Okay, cool. Good to know. Go ahead and just delete all of these. Easy peasy. Okay. So how do I want to lay this level out? Hmm. What if... Let's make... something sort of interesting here. Oh... Do I have... No. Please, thank you. Okay. I'm going to make a uh, thing like this in the middle, I think. Maybe. Maybe it's better to do that in the middle, I guess. I kind of want to make a uh, four separate rooms here, right? Uh, so we'll do this, and then we need to make... I can't use a triangular wedge right now. Um, so let's take this, we will go down here, down here, and then I think we'll start the player down here actually, so let's go ahead and move them down to here, and then we can just do like this. And then boop and boop, boop, boop. And we can kind of do little testing chambers, sort of. Boop. And then over here, we'll do one here, one here, one here, one here over here and down to here so we have these little uh testing chambers sort of players to get through all that <coughs> excuse me all right so we'll start him over here in the corner and he needs to get out right so how do we want to do this? Well, I like the, the good old fashioned, make it so that they have to choose and potentially block themselves off at a tactic, right? So we can do that. So if they push these two blocks, they uh, get screwed there. And then what else can I do? Let me just see where I actually spawn. Let me hit play. So I am basically right on the ground there. Right! Right! Let's uh, move me up here. Where does the box start for the, uh, the dialogue box? Okay, basically right here where it is. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do this.
bit better. Okay. So we're gonna start with a rib like this. That way, when I hit play, and let me make sure my spawn point is in a decent area here. I spawn in, and the text box here now takes over that area, so perfect. Let's do that. And you know what? I think what I might do. I might change the level up going forward. So let's open up our GUI, canvas, our text box. Go ahead and show this. So let's extend this up higher. Let's bring it in a little bit. Let's hit play. Because I think it would be nice if I just like make an area dedicated to the text box that nothing is ever going to like show up behind. Okay. Bring it in a little bit further. Hit play. There we go. That looks perfect. Okay. That's where the text box will be going forward. Um, I think what we'll do... I'm going to remove these blocks. But I, of course, need to resize the dialogue. Oops, what the hell did I just do there? Resize the dialogue canvas here as well. What the fuck? What is that? There we go. Now the dialogue will still be in there. Okay. Cool. Go ahead and do that. And let's go down to the collider map. Okay. I'm gonna real quick just make a new prefab. Recall 1-X. And I'm going to do this so I don't have to keep making all these dang prefabs. We're making all the levels surrounding areas. Just do this, get rid of that. Add one of those there. We'll add these here. Okay. There we go. We have a nice... Oh, out of these two. There we go. Okay. Now this is going to be our future levels going forward. So that's what we'll do. We're going to move this down to here. Create a new prefab. I can then get rid of this. I said get rid of this. And we can whoop, that one back up again. Cool. So yeah, now going forward, we will have our uh, little text box area. We won't have to worry about having a puzzle get hidden by it again, which would be most unfortunate. So let's go ahead and spawn point. So if I look at the spawn point, it's basically my slide starts like at the way at the bottom there. If I raise him up a little bit higher, it should spawn like right around here. Yeah, okay, perfect. So that's what we'll do. Um, all right, so actually, let me set this as default parent. That way everything just goes in the items area. Yosha, okay. So limiting ourselves to this design, what I wanna do, we're gonna spawn here. Let's put a block here and a block here, so they have to move that one. Uh, what should I do now? So they move this block. In order to go down, they would have to move it to here, which is fine. But let's say if we want to have them go here again, right? So they move this one. 
there. They can then go down and skip through here. A little lime blossom. Oh, I'm not sure what a Sokoban is. What is that? So I guess I'm not making one unless I'm accidentally making one. Okay, so you go down here, and then you can come over here and just go up there. Where you move all those in your screw kind of. Puzzle game about pushing blocks into their place. Kind of, I guess then. Yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily that, just that. I'm going to add other elements as well, but you're pushing blocks, you're flipping levers, opening gates, that kind of stuff. It's just a puzzle game. It's not really just specifically about blocks. So. Okay. Sounds good. I'll check it out. All right, so they move that block over there. They can then either continue to push, which would then block them off, or they can go down and push that block. I think that's fine for this little area here. Um, there's no need to do anything else for that. In the second chamber here, let's see. Let's start by having them have to move this block out of the way. And then it gets moved up to there. That allows them to go either left or right. Let's go ahead and uh, block that off for now. I don't need that one necessarily. Yeah, so they just move that one up. It gets there, and then they can move left or right. Don't really have much room. And then. We'll have them go up and move that block. They can then move it here and then go down. You know what? Maybe I will put that block here. And that block here. So they move that one over. They can then go down, go through here. Meanwhile, in the bottom area, they can go through here. And they will have to push this block a ways. Mm -hmm. Put another block here. I'll push that one over. Push that one. Right. Let's trick them. That way is a dead end. You push that block there, they can, I guess they could potentially move that block if they really wanted to, but they wouldn't really do much there. And then, yeah. So I'm saying that, hit play. We get our little uh, guy here, we move this over here, we go down here, move over here, yada, yada, yada. So we move this all the way here. We then have a little bit of space we can move that down. Which means we can get out that way. We could potentially use that if they're thinking in grid squares and they don't think about how they could have a little extra room. We could mess that up. Yeah. Let's add a block here so that way they can go up or down. Or, I make them learn that mechanic by doing this. So it seems like they could move that block, but it's going to get stuck if they're not paying attention, which would then ruin everything for them. Little do they know they can move that and then move that down, then get out of here, right? And once they get through there, they can place a block here. Where they can move it nee, 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 over to here. I think making them go through there with a block might be useful. Let's put another block here. Put a red block here. Nope. Make that a little more. 
center on the square. There we go. All right. So we need to move that movable block back where it belongs. There we go. Okay. So they move that through there. They can then move this block, move it through, which I'm going to force them to do that. There we go. Okay. We'll just do that for right now. Simple enough. They move that block through, and then they're gonna have to collect blocks along the way. There we go. These four blocks, we push them all the way. It's gonna be one, two, three, four. The block here, just real quick, so I remember. That is where they're going. We're also gonna make that block just kind of be there so they don't go in there. But it could go in there, that might make sense, but they push all those blocks up against this wall, and then they would be here. I'm going to do this. Like that. Can I have to snap to the grid, actually? Oops. Need to change what the grid is, though, don't I? Um, there's way too much too, wouldn't it? Uh, that. I'm gonna change that to one now. Still clipping this. I want it to clip to the uh, like center. center. What about uh, 0 0.25? Did that do anything? No. Did that do anything? No. I'll set that to one again. And then what if I change this to like? Five. I do what I want. No. I don't understand snapping that. I just wanted to snap in the middle, please. make them both like 0 0.5. I'm not sure what the heck's going on. There we go. There we go. Now I can have everything kind of snap in and it won't be misaligned and throw people with OCD off, you know? There we go. That'll help going forward. The first couple of levels people have to suffer through because I'm not going to go back and change them, but once they get to this room, it'll be perfect for them. Okay. So, push all the way over to here. And then they can go up. And I'm going to have it so... Oh, that's just messed up. I'm going to have to, every time I place a block, snap it to the grid. Darn, I can't just drag it there. That's rough. Okay, anyway. Lock of visibility upgrade. Okay, anyway. Setting that aside, I need to remove that one immovable block. So we remove that one. So, they'll push all of these over to here. They can then come up here and push that one down, which will lead them into this room. Simple enough, we don't have to make anything too complex. 
We just kind of want to have a player potentially mess themselves up. So we push one block down. I think we'll have this go here. Another one right here. That way. You can get rid of that one block you push down from up here into there. Or, I guess you could go up here, since it's going to be coming in here, and you can push that one block down there, rather than pushing uh, down there. True. Yeah. Or we could make a uh, another immobile block here. So they can't move just that block down. They have to move this block specifically down in order to get past. But, you know what? The less things we have in our world that we need, the better. So, do that. Um, so now, we have this. That means there's going to be potentially a block here. So the player's going to come off this way into this area. And let's see. We can have them come over to here, and they can push this block over, over, to, let's say, here. That's blockages in here for it. Okay, move that down to there, and then push that into there, which means they get down to here. And let's put a block in here that they're going to have to push down. And then let's do this, which will make them have to go around this way. You push the block further. Hmm, no. You want to move this one down. Do that. And move this one over here. Right? Yes, yeah, so we move that one over here. But then slide this one down to here so we can go over this way. Move that one over there to get out. Very simple. Okay. Perfect. Now, I just need to count up all the movable blocks, which is 16. Okay. 16. Let's go ahead and select level 1. Come over to the spawn items. So we need 16 of these. Perfect. And then we need 16 spawn points. So, empty. Block spawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. There we go. There's all those. Go ahead and then also put them into their area here. So we reset the level. That's good. Okay. Perfect. Now we need to go ahead and. Set these up, which is actually going to be a lot easier now, since now I can just use the grid to navigate me to where they belong. So the funny thing about this level is that the blocks are actually going to be more squared once we uh, take them out. Let me just do this real quick. So we got that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, so we need this one. I lost the place where I was at, so this one, this one, this one, Oops. Let me grab the central there. Okay, so this level will teach the player a few things. Um, it'll teach them that they can manipulate the, the hitbox areas here. By pushing this one, I can actually just, just show it. So, 
This is what's going to teach the player. First of all, they can do this. Sometimes pushing a block is not always the correct option. Sometimes you want to go around over to here. You can also lock yourself if you push this one to the right, so we're not going to do that. But it's going to teach them this helpful mechanic that we might never use again. Who knows? You push it down. You have a little more hitbox space there. You push this one over to here. It also teaches that you can move multiple blocks, but it slows you down a bit. You can do that. Also, I should really have put blocks up there. <laughs> It'll teach you this. And then you can learn that you can push these over, but that won't do anything. At this point, you can push these down, make a little room, and go like that. Go over through here. Push that one down, push this one over, which it got stuck. Oh no, it got stuck? Oh my god, it got stuck. Why? Why did you get stuck? Those blocks should be like the same like level, right? You look at them, they're like the same level, but it got stuck. Wait. Enhance. Ow! You shouldn't be getting stuck there. The hitbox isn't touching. I guess that's enough to collide right there, so that's kind of throwing it off. Um, is there a... Unlock that. Hmm. Ah, that's what it does. Okay. Okay, well, what I'll do real quick is if you look here, the, the box is actually a little bit bigger than the tiles is. Let's let's actually make it the opposite, where you can kind of clip inside of them with things if you need to. Actually, it looks like the top was just the only one that was like sticking up further. So maybe that was the cause, I don't know. Anyway, now that should potentially help a little bit. I we'll have to trust the player to figure that out. And then we need to, of course, add a couple more blocks up in here to prevent the player from just going up the whole time, right? Okay, save that. Now we need to do the dialogue, which, let's see, so. You know what, let's make a prefab first. Actually, we need to edit the end level stuff. So current level, oop, level number five. All right, now we can do this, right? Yes, okay. Prefab made. Let's open this baby up and actually add in level five to the next level though. Let me just make sure I have level four here too. Oh wait, that's level four. Save changes, yes. And level three, perfect. All right. Level five. So previously we had the dialogue saying that aside from these experiments, yada yada yada. Mm. Okay. I suppose we'll explain some backstory here. My Fascination with... I need, to, I need to look at how to spell fascination. Hold on. Fascination. Right, it has an S in it. Let me uh, also check just in four here. I did put S right here. I hate long words. Fascination with 
Slimes began. Began, began. Thank you. When a slime attacked, my nation's capital city. Let's see, it was an odd thing. A slime and other monsters came and. Demon attacked. They over cover they over powered the guards and the knights even defeated the king. How could a mere slime do this? How did the slime get the other monsters to follow it? All questions that burned in my mind and led me to this research. Let's see. I think we can do a little more because this level's a little longer, maybe? I don't know. So, all questions that burned in my mind and led me to this research. So I began experimenting with your kind. I think we'll end it there. We don't want to be too long, so it gets out of hand, right? Okay. Okay. Go ahead and save. And level 5 is done. Yay! Let's get rid of that. Prefabs, I need you. Next level. Alright. Unpack, unpack, unpack the prefab. Level 1-6, welcome! Okay. Here we go. So, we have our area a little mapped out already. That's perfect. Once again, we're going to do items as the default parent. So I think now is the time we introduce the pitfalls. So, the first line of dialogue here let's say, let's intro, introduce a new element to these puzzles, shall we? Explain it, so figure it out yourself. Let's see how smart you are. Of all the slimes, we'll just do the dialogue first, why not? Of all the slimes that I have researched, there have been dumb ones and intelligent ones. The intelligence of the intelligent ones varies quite a bit. So let's see what you're capable of doing. Okay. That'll be the text for this one. Now, we're going to use our pitfalls 
now. So let's first of all set our level spawn. Let's have it be up here. There we go. Our end level, we need to of course map that out. So let's go ahead and we'll make it be down here again. Need to move that up a bit. I think that still works right there. Okay. <coughs> now then. I think first of all, let's go ahead and just make a room. Just a little room for our slime to start in. Hmm. I don't have the things I need. Fine. So let's do that. And this. And then this. So. Didn't I make. Yeah, I did. I made one of these. There we go. Corner. All right. And then we'll go ahead and put one of these here. That way we can put our pitfall trap right in the middle of that. And so the spawn point for the slime is there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and put a block here. Actually, I might need to move the spawn point up one more as well. Let's, let's see where I spawn exactly. Okay. Okay, so that's perfect. Let's then add our pitfall trap right here. Make it nice and in the middle. Now the inspector. Um, we need to move the spawn point over to here. And this one is vertical. So we check these vertical boxes. Excellent. All right, and then let's just test this out just to make sure it works as intended now. So, we spawn in, boop, 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 go here, and we get teleported back. Okay, so what if we push this block into here? Oh, it makes a path. Nice. Okay. Very simple. I mean, we have pushing blocks. If you push the block, not that hard to figure out, right? Okay. So. We've learned that you can seal the pitfall with a block. Good to know. Now I can make use of so many different tactics for this. Perfect. So, let's see. So once you get through here, let's go ahead and add a couple more things to the tile map, shall we? Start with down here. We'll just go up to here, and now that that's like that, ah, I, don't, I don't have a uh, double corner piece, do I? Hmm. Unfortunate. I'll just do that then. You know, a little wonky, but that's okay. Okay. So we have those. And we can put down another pitfall trap. But I'm just going to go ahead and copy our current pitfall trap. So that way I don't have to add the spawn piece in there again. Also, since this is horizontal, we'll uncheck the is vertical. place another movable block here so that they mess with that. All right, so now that we're in a bigger room, I think what I want to do, let's add a little more tiling. We'll make a, a nice room here. And let's not make it directly along a wall. So here, 
here, and then here. Okay. And of course, we grab another pitfall trap. I'm going to copy this one since this one is already horizontal. I'm not going to change anything. Perfect. Um. Okay. But this one's going to be a little bit different because now we're going to have more moving blocks and stuff like that. We're going to have to use our noodle caboodle to determine exactly what we want to do. So, we're going to start in this row. And let's just add a couple of blocks here just to get our players started, right? They can choose to move whichever block they want, right? And we will hmm. the end of this one. Let's add that, which just is vertical. Level spawn in there. We will do this, that, 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 here, up here, here. Okay. Now let's add another movable block here. So that'll kind of force them to move the blocks and push them into the pit. Or at least one goes in the pit. Okay. Actually, I got a better idea. Let's put another pit there. <laughs> we'll do two things this time. We'll teach them about the pits and teach them that you can move blocks over blocks that have a block or over pits that have a block in them. I want to move this block one over. We want to add another immovable block right here. So the thing that I want the player to do is push this block in, then go over here, get this block, move it over here, push that block in. So that way you have a block, a block, and then your extra block, right? That way you can move your... Uh, other thing over here let's go ahead and block these up and just kind of how oh, you push it over that way right okay so what over here we want to make it like a trap to where like it, you think you can move and do stuff over here but you can't right hmm So what if I make a block here and then another pitfall here? Right? And so this way, the player could move this block up and then those two blocks would go in that hole, and then they could move that block over, and then have to go around and move that block up again, and go like that. But regardless, they have to do the puzzle. So I think that's fine, right? Regardless, it is teaching them. So it's not necessarily this block is bad to move up. Just you'd have to move around a little more rather than just moving all those. Move that one up. Go boop 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 boop. So yeah. Okay. So the plan is you move those two blocks into those two holes, move that block into that hole, move that block around and into that hole. Or just, I guess, push this one up, move that one over, and then push this one over and use as well. But you'd have to go around here regardless, so that's fine. All right. Now that we've done that, I think the next bit of the level, we make some traps that are false pits, right? Like, you could fill a pit with a block, but you're going to lose a block. Right, so we're gonna have some pits that you can't fill because you just don't have enough blocks, right? Once you're in here, let's go ahead 
we'll make our exit like this. You know what? Do this. There we go. And let's add a... Which one's the horizontal? This one's a horizontal. Add another horizontal pit there, and you're gonna have to use a block to get into. Okay. So, the player won't necessarily know what the black spaces are when they first come in, right? So they don't know if they move this block down, if they're gonna screw themselves because it's a immovable block again, right? Or if it's gonna be a blessing, they need to move it onto it. So it'll kind of depend one way or another, right? Okay, so room done, room done, room done. Next room. But we need to get a block. And I think what we want to do is we want to make this block the block that goes in here, right? So we want this block to have to be like carried along a path, essentially. And then you use other blocks to uh, clog up holes, right? So, let's start by saying you basically just want to push this one all the way over to here. And let's put a hole, let's just copy. Let's put a hole here, right? Perfect. Ugh. All right, so you push this one over here. And then we also have a block here, we can say. And then we have a red block here, red block here, the red block here. And then just so I don't have to keep using red blocks, let's go ahead and just do this. Okay. So the solution for this one would be to push this one up against there and then just push that one down, right? After that, you move your block down a couple. That way you can get around it to move it again over there. But let's add a, let's see. I want another vertical pitfall. Hold on. I keep unselecting that. Okay, so boop, boop. Let's go ahead and put this down here. And this over here. That way it really gets your goat, right? So put this here. Boom. All right. So the player moves this block down to there. Then moves this block across this little bridge thing that's made down to here. They could then just trash the block and, you know, keep going. Or they could try to go around and, you know, see what they could do there. Actually, I haven't tested what happens if you try to go across, like in the middle of these. Maybe there's not enough space for a hitbox. There might not be. Hold on. Let me hit play. Okay. We're gonna go to the scene real quick so I can grab my character. We're just gonna move him over here. Back to the game. Okay. So if I just walk over here, oh my God, I can. I'm looking at hitboxes here. So uh, let's, let's grab all of this. Oof. That's rough. Um, okay. If I move the plate, oop. Uh, well, he got owned. Right, it's big clipping. That's right, that's what that does. Um, anyway, let's open up the pitfall trap here and inspector. Um.
guess we just try to make it bigger. Damn it. Selected it. So the reason we made it so small before was because we uh, didn't want to just like touch the edge of it and get sent back to the start. Let's try it with this. 0 0.22, let's go 23, 0 0.23, so it's nice and square, and we want the offset to be 0, 0, so it's in the middle. Okay, let's hit save and see what happens. Slime character, move you over here, and if I grab everything, I might still be able to get through there, but let's check. I still can, okay. Let's look at the scene again. God, we're gonna have to make it so much bigger. So just any of the hitbox needs to touch those. Well, that's the thing. Okay, good fall. Uh, let's go uh, 0 0.25. How bigger is that? Not that much bigger, okay. 0 0.3. How does that look? Let's see. Okay, so now if I go back to the game. Yep. Still not enough, okay. We're almost there though. I think if we go to 0 0.4, we could get it. 0 0.4, 0 0.4. I mean, it would be easier if I used like grid movement for the character, but I think grid movement just kind of looks janky. If like you're snapping the character to the grid as it moves. So I'd much rather be able to have them like move like freely to like point spaces and stuff like that. And doing this is like, whatever, not that big of a deal. It's just a little tedious in the beginning. Okay. Once again, character. Narrow. And now I think before I move, let's take a look. You could just barely fit in there, but you'd have to like really try. I'll leave it like that. You know what? If someone can get through that gap, props, because that has to be like pixel freaking perfect. Like, let me grab my character. Yeah, they'd have to be like pixel perfect, dang near. Look at that. Oh man, it is definitely possible. But they'd have to like line it up. Exactly. You know what? That, I think, is fine. Give them a little uh, incentive to try things. Okay. So we'll do that. Perfect, okay. Let's continue onward. Now then. So you move that block, get that one. You move it down here. And then we want to move the block over further. So, let's get the grid so I can actually see what we're doing. All right, so you move it over here, move it over here, then you can go down as the player, do some stuff. Question is, what will you do? Okay, well, first of all, let's add a, a block here that kind of makes it so, snap on grid, please. So now that's there. But I want you to walk around to push it down after that. Okay. So, we want to have some more traps here. Also, I just realized that's there. That looks kind of janky. Let's grab this one. There we go. That's better. This one too. There we go. That looks better. Perfect. All right. Back off this. 
Now then, move that there. You can then move down, come over here. Let's add a, another movable block here. We'll have them scooch over into, I want a horizontal one. Put that one here. And then let's put a red block here. Actually, you know what? No, I want more pitfalls. Put a pitfall there. All right. That way, either way, you would have you know stuff. So, all right. So you move the pitfall there. That way, you can walk up and around in order to move the block further down this way. Then you have this area. You can move it over here. I think I'll add another pitfall right after this one as well. So it makes you go, you push this block in here, that way you can get up and around here. You push that block that's going to be there down, then you go over here, push that block over on this one, then you have to go around again and push it down or else it will get caught in one of those. So it kind of just drags out what the player's doing, makes me think, right? Uh, yeah. And obviously you can't push the block up there because it gets stuck there then. Down there it gets stuck there. You wouldn't be able to move it across there. Um, so let's grab a couple of horizontal pitfalls. We're going to put them here. And... Let's put... Should I put a block up there? Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do that. We're going to put a block up here. So this way, once they push over here, they could potentially leave this one behind or say, I don't need this one. But if they just push this one into there, they're going to lose out because they need this block. They're going to push this one back over to here, down here, to cross over to here, then we're gonna have another pitfall they need to get rid of over here somewhere. Um, so let's see. Where should the next pitfall be? So they go down to here, and what do they do? So if we push the block down to here, So either I want to put the block or the next pitfall here or somewhere over here and have another block. Because otherwise they can just move the uh, the main block down here and push it down there and then go over that way, right? Maybe that's what I do. Okay, hold on. Uh, these ones are the horizontals. So let's go over here. And then let's add a red block up here. Okay. So... I'm thinking what I can do is I can push a block down here and it just sits there. And then you have to get a block into this location, which if you push down, down, no, if that block is there, then you'd be kind of stuck. You wouldn't be able to move another block in there. Move it over. If you move a block there and there, you can't get over that way or that way to do anything. So let's get rid of this one. I think it could still work if it's like this. If you push one block down to here, you can then go over here and move it that way. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Then we have that block for that one, and then the original block for that one right there. Okay. Is that all we need to do? We push one block down to here. And then we can go down here and move it over this way. Let's add another pitfall. 
right here. Does that do anything or add anything to it? So if I do that, they can push the block down to here and they can go around this way. Doesn't do anything for them. They need this block. They push the block down to here, go over here, push the block through there, or they can go back through here for some reason if they needed to. But does having this block do anything? Or is it just a waste of space? I think it's just a waste of space, but it also is another hazard for the player to have to deal with. We could do that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. I think that's our level right there. So let's go ahead and hit play and try it out. Okay, first of all, player moves this down here, move this against the wall, shoves that in there, pushes that one up here, goes over to here. Pushes these up like this. Boop. Boop. Pushes these over here. Boop. Boop. These ones get pushed over to here. This one goes in there. I need to get this one down to here and very carefully line it up over to here. And then get this block, push it into here. Grab this block. This one lined up as well in the area it wants to go into. There we go. Push this block down to right here is fine. We can go into there. This guy over here. Let me I'm gonna push that block there. Go around here. There we go. And level complete in about a minute. So. Not bad. It is still the first level of worlds, so I think that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and assign the level items here. So first of all, we need to set the pressure or the pitfalls. Let's go ahead and grab all the pitfall blocks and drag them into our pitfall reset. Excellent. Next, we need to get all the movable blocks. And that's all of them, which is one, two, three, four, five. You know what? I can just I can just move them over here to the item spawns and see it's ten. Okay. And then we need to add. Block spawn. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. There we go. All of these guys go into the spawn points. Excellent. And then we just gotta move all these onto their proper location. Alright, I really like how this puzzle turned out. Quite neat. It makes you, you know, not just see a block and want to go, I want to put it in a hole. It makes you go, oh, I need to be careful with where I put the blocks. So, thinking with the noodle caboodle. Okay, so we have those set. We have those set. What about our end level? Next level is there. Okay. And that one is there. Perfect. All right. So, levels, throw this prefab down here, and then open up this prefab, open up the next level, drag this one over to here, and that one's ready. Excellent. All right, I like how our level has gone from, there's nothing inside of it, to a single cube being there, to like a few dots, a couple more dots, a bunch more dots, and then there's some like blue and red and yellow in there now. Kind of funny. That's the 
way our level looks in the uh, thing there. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like one of those um, like charts where it plots different points. Kind of cool. All right, let's get rid of level one six now. Bye bye. We can drag the next prefab in. Level one seven. Let's go ahead and unpack this. Okay. And level seven. One dash seven. One dash seven. And level seven. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. So now, where do I want the exit and the spawn to be? Hmm. So now we've integrated the pitfall traps. Do a little more stuff. But I think after right now, let's take a break. It has been almost three hours. Go to the bathroom, stretch, all that good stuff. Don't wanna, you know, don't wanna sit for an extended period of time straight, right? So I'll be right back. All right, I am back. So, well, taking my break, stretching and all that, I was thinking, 
they say that the best way to solve a puzzle, like a maze and stuff like that, is to work from the, the, the end and go to the beginning, right? I wonder if that might be the same for designing a puzzle, where you start at the end rather than starting at the beginning and just kind of being like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So it might be of interest to start at the end. So I think what we could do is let's get our tile map collider. Let's grab one of these. Let's have our end point be up here. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll kind of snake through the level like that. I don't know about the last part, like this, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. Um, also, real quick, in the level prefab, level 1 6, did I have the end point? <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if I made one of those exit areas. Okay. I don't want the levels to look too much alike. So. Let's see. Where's the uh, spawn point right here? Go ahead and put that up here. Oh, what we could do is we could even put the spawn point like next to the player. A divided by a wall. Be funny. Okay. So we want to start up here. What could be cool is if we implement. Just a bunch of pitfalls. Oops. Still over here. A bunch of pitfalls. So this is going to be a vertical one. Copy over the level spawn. So here's two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. Hmm. If the level was wider, <gasps> maybe I could do it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Okay. Let's make it horizontal. One, two, three, four, five. So you need five blocks here, right? And then we're going to add a bunch of immovable blocks here that you can't get away with just having a single like block pushed into these areas, right? And so, how many areas do we have left here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we just wanted to have Five blocks there, that might work. Okay. So I think we'll kind of skip like every other and make five slots, right? So one, two, three, four, five, five slots, right? And what we want to do is push blocks into those slots and then push them all in at once is the end game for this puzzle, okay? Which means in this area, we need to have sort of like obstacle courses to get blocks out and into these slots, right? So, one, two, three, four, five, well, I put six down, so one more. There we go, okay. And then it's fine if the player spawns here because there's really nothing for them to do, right? Okay. So let's next, Let's go ahead and just place our six blocks. Okay. Makes sense. 
Oh, these do have a spawn point in them, right? Okay. I wasn't sure if they hitting control Z might have removed them or not. Alright, so we got our pitfalls. We got our blocks. This is how the puzzle is going to look when it's almost completed, right? Except these blocks will be like in one more, and then you'll just push them all in. Okay. So. How do we want to do this? Let's save. Hmm. I guess we just kind of start with one block at a time. So, obviously this one has to come from here, which means you're gonna to have to push it from here, if nothing else, right? So, what if we have it start over here? No, here. And what we need to do Push it up, go around, push it over, and we can kind of go in there, right? Let's put a couple more blocks in here, though. Make it a little harder, right? So they... I can't put that one there. Unless they want to be able to get around to move it. So you push this one up. Where's, where's the block at? This one. So you push this one up here, you then go around, push it over to here, push it down to here, push it over to here, and push it in there. Easy. Or, when it's here, I guess you push it up to here, and then over to here. But then, I mean, you can just push that up to here, and then just push it all in there. Plus, of course, I had a block here. But now, double check. They move this one from here up to here. They go around over to here, push this block over to here. And they go over here and push it down here and then over to here and then up to here. Yep, okay, that'll work. That's block one. Okay. Block number two. How about we start it in basically the same kind of position? Right there. And for this one, is there a way? Unless I use a pressure plate or a lever, I can't like seal off an area after you've gone through it, unfortunately. I mean, either they do the same thing or they push it through a different area, right? That's that's okay. Okay, so we push this block down twice. We'll leave that down there in case the player does put it down there and then they screw themselves over. Then they can't get it away from the wall. We'll do that, they can go down here, and they can then push it over to here. We'll put a block here. They can then push that up to here. So let's evilly place a pitfall right there. Or what I could do is I could replace most of these, like, immovable blocks with pitfalls so that they cannot push them too far. 
They have to be very exact with their uh, movement. Right? Just be really evil about it. get that into there. We push it up to here, go back around, push it back over to here, where, lo and behold, another one of these will be waiting for them. Okay. And then... We just push it up in there. Perfect. Okay. Let's block two. Pretty simple stuff. Block three next. Let's start it down here, shall we? Okay. So you might think you could just move this one over or whatever. But you need a specific amount of blocks, right? So I wonder if I want to add more blocks to have them kind of like go into pitfalls. So it seems like you have enough, but in reality, you're short a few. Hmm. Anyway. So let's add a couple of blockers here. Kind of separate these two halves. That way you can't just push this one up and go over to here, right? Okay. And then, we need to move this one up to here, basically. So we can move it over through here. That's too easy, isn't it? Yeah. And regardless, it, it can't go through here, because then it, we wouldn't be able to push it up. So, you take this one and you move it up to here. You can then push it here. Only I could fit like a block here. What I could do is put a pitfall here and using the player's ability to like barely nudge stuff. I could have them, like, move it over. Man, if I had pressure placed, this particular puzzle would be so much easier. So I put a pressure plate here on each one of these where they push the plate into. And once they do that, I could close these little gaps off. So they couldn't reuse the gaps. God. Maybe I save this puzzle for then. Or I could reuse the same puzzle, which is include extra mechanics into it at a later time. Ah. And then they'd be like, oh, I know the answer. But then they see the pressure plates and go like, oh no, what do those do? Then we cut them off, right? I could do that. That's kind of cheap though, isn't it? To just reuse the same puzzle. I just add like a special little mechanic to it. Anyway, I think this is this is fine. So you push this one over here. Well, then you can't do anything because that block is there, so you're going to have to remove that block. So... And then push it up. Okay. So, real quick, I'm going to put a pitfall trap. Am I?
Let me test that. Because I think I can just barely get away with doing this. But if we come from this angle, and push it over here, push it up a little bit, so it's like that. We can then do this kind of thing. Ah, no, it took it. Crap. Hmm. We might have been able to do that a little bit better, though. Let's try that one more time. I want to do something like that, where you like have to avoid the hitbox of the of the thing, right? So push it over here, push it up here, push it over here. We got to remember it's like about a fourth of it, right? So down here should work. No, it didn't. Okay. How big is the hitbox on this again? Fourth, and the this thing. All oh, right, the hitbox is bigger on this. I forgot. What if we just readjust the hitbox? Am I three? Make it a little bit smaller. I still want it to be a little bit larger than the uh, corners there. Let's go 0 0.9, 0 0.9. It was a little bit larger than the actual box itself, so we can like hit things easier. Okay. Now let's try this again. A boosh. Ah. <laughs> I think I should just like work on figuring out exactly where the hitbox is at. This would be very irritating for a player, though. Okay, so we can hit just on the blue, a little bit further than the blue, it looks like, and then... Okay, so if we go like here, and like here, oops. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Cool. So we can just skirt the edge a little bit. And then get that boy up moving in there. Okay, perfect. Well, the question is, why would you do that? Right? If you could just move it here. Well, I guess, yeah, we have to do that, right? So we have to kind of finagle it through there, which is possible. But I mean, at this point, like I said, um, you just move this one up, push it in, and you can do those two as well and use those two slots still. So it's it's not necessarily the best plan, right? It's fine. That'll work. We'll just make the player think. You know? Okay. Now we have three more blocks and basically this amount of space, or if we want to put another block over here somewhere, we could as well. Um, right. So let's fool the player. Let's move this block here. Very obviously, it's the block that you can move. Maybe they'll think... In order to get this one over through here, we can do that or whatever. And I'll try to just scrap that block, right? That'll be easy enough. Right, you can just move that one down here, through here, up through there. Kind of the same path that one's taking, it's just you have to do two of them. Okay, move block number four. We can set this one here, and we can set this one here, I guess. And... Again, this doesn't really matter because we can use these holes multiple times. So that's whatever. But what we can do is let's see. Hmm. <laughs> 
Hmm. Again, so much easier if I had like pressure plates or levers right now. Really pressure plates because they're like a toggle. Like a, a one-way kind of thing. Okay. So let's... Okay, these are... I think they're all horizontal ones, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go crazy with the uh, things here. I don't even know where I'm placing these. I'm just going to do whatever with them right now. Okay. Let's go with that arrangement. Why? I don't know. I just placed them there. Sometimes that's what you need to do. To just kind of get a feel for things. So, if we assume these want to go to their proper holes, we would push this one up here, push it over there, kind of get right in there and push that in there. That one, we just push over there, push it directly up. Big whoop. Whatever. But. But. We could also add some more of these like that that way sure those two holes are open but you'd have to get those through there which would be kind of complicated to do right and actually What if I did add one here? You can still kind of finagle that one through there without that. But the problem is once you get that one here, you would have to be very careful to like get it through there. That could kind of do that, right? Also, I'm realizing you could literally just take these and just put them here and then just push them all the way in. Yeah. Foiled by my own design! Well, that's fine. What if we grab another pitfall, though? A uh, horizontal pitfall. And place it over here. There we go. Okay. And now, let's just add a couple more movable blocks. So, assuming we want four extra ones. Do something like this. Like this, like that, and like that, right? That way the player can move all of them, and they can get them into holes that they need to get them into by moving around. It might kind of overstimulate them a bit. Also, I should probably actually... We have some here as well, which means I need two extra ones as well. Um, or you know what? No. Maybe I could just say, screw it. That's all you get. Do with it as you will. And kind of leave it up to the uh, player to interpret what they're supposed to do. Obviously, they need six blocks to get into here, right? And at least a seventh block to... Get one hole open. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which means they have three to spare. So they could move one of these up through here to easily get those ones in. Or at least get them lined up there, right? And then they could use this one, for example, to get these ones in here. And then they would have to. Well, at, at minimum, they need to get this one so that they can go in here and push that. Or at least that one and that one, so then they can like use this one to funnel stuff in and move through there. I think this one, this layout, is perfect. Just aggressive holes is what I could also call this level. And some players might be looking at this like, oh, what, what am I supposed to do with this, right? Because that kind of like separates it into two halves, right? You have to do this half and then this half. Right. 
crazy. I, I like this. I like this level. I like it a lot. All right, all pitfalls. Well, here's what I can do. I can just do a uh, select this. Uh, that's the wrong thing. I wanted the padlock. Thank you. All right, and then we just search pitfall. Grab all of these. Drag them into pitfalls. Okay, and then movable blocks. We have looks like ten of them. Right? That's ten selected. Yep. Okay. Perfect. This one. I don't. There's new spawn points, and then ten of these guys. So item spawn ten. And they're all in there. Excellent. Spawn points. We need to make ten of those real quick. Block spawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. And we come up to here, come up to here, collect all these, put them in there. Get that. Okay. Mm -mm. Let's go ahead and move the spawn points to their residing locations. Pretty sure this is all of them, right? I didn't like double up on one, right? Yep, perfect. Okay, that's everything. All right, so that's all the items placed and everything. Um, have I done dialogue yet? I have not. Okay. Well, well, that's fine. Um, before we do dialogue, let's test the map. So first things first. I'm going to just get rid of this one, that way I can do that. Now this one also, I'm just going to do the same thing with it, screw it. Easy enough. I'm just going to put that one right here for safekeeping. Okay, so next, I think the best course of action would be to move this one over here. And then carefully finagle it. Oops. Well, not like that, obviously. But, uh. Fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't move that one anymore. Crap. That's bad. Well. Well. I can at least move these a little bit. Let me, let me separate them. Get that one in there. And then I think I have enough space to go over here and push this one out of the location I was in. Okay. Ah, damn it. This one's definitely gonna get some people. There we go. Just pixel perfect. Hit the box. Out of the way. If I keep messing it up. <laughs> okay, there we go. Two boxes in. And I've only used two of the four extra that I have. Okay. <clears throat> you know what? Let's make this really easy. There's all four boxes used. I can just come right across here. Do that. And then I'm just gonna bomb myself because there's no penalty for that. And I'll just push all of these in. And I can do the last three. One, two, three. I'm just gonna respawn faster than anything else. Okay, and then we can move this one up here, move this one across here. And over here. 
here and over to here. And push. Okay. So we get that one locked there. And we're going to move that one over a little bit. Something like this. Let's get this block here. Up into its node as well. There we go. Yeah, I got kind of covered myself right there, but that's fine. And we'll get the last one. And there's all three done in about four minutes. Not bad. Damn, just over four minutes. Nice. That's with me knowing exactly what I have to do. So, excellent. You always gotta confirm that your uh, levels are indeed beatable. So we'll go ahead and add that there. Open up level six, end level, off level seven into there. All right, so level six was what you're capable of doing was the last line there. Okay. So level seven. Okay, the dialogue for this one. Not bad. Let's see how you do with something a bit more complex. We'll say you are now limited in how many boxes you can move. And how many bits you can close. Alright, well I guess in the last match you were also kind of limited, but... And that's neither here nor there, right? So... We'll say some of the lines gets on this level, on this, can I just call them levels? Is that what the canon is going to be? We're going to call them levels? Yeah, screw it. Well, you fair any better? Is that the right fair? Right, it's not F A I R. That's like a. What is this? I think fair. Is the right one there. We'll do that. I don't want to say a whole bunch of stuff here, you know. Okay. We'll just do that. Perfect. That's level one seven. Oh yeah, yeah, brother. Okay. Um. Three fabs. There's gonna be eight, nine, and and let's just get them all out there. Gonna get them all numbered properly. So eight, eight. 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 Right, my number locks off now. Eight. <clears throat> nine. Nine and nine. And then the last level of the one world. Ten. 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 Alright, let's see how many we can get finished today, shall we? Maybe we can finish all of world one and then move on to stuff and also let me hit eight real quick nine come on, please call me. there we go all right ha, 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 ha. so we also need to uh 
and at that end level here. And also we need to unpack the prefabs. So there we go. Push, push. End level eight. All right. Uh, end level nine. Level nine. Yeah. Okay. Ten. Okay, so how do we want to design these courses? Going from the, the end seemed a little bit better. Damn it, I hit face palm again. Okay. The damn numlock number nine key. How dare it? How dare it make me face palm? Okay. How do I want to design these models? First of all, let's uh, hide the extra levels or else they're going to get in the way. Uh, let's set items again to be the default parent when we add things. Do we introduce a new item? Maybe we do. Maybe we introduce the conveyor belt because I, I feel like the conveyor belt is technically something that's block related because all it is is move things right let's see how this works okay so first of all we need to determine where we want to have our end spot at and i think we haven't really done one that's pointing down yet have we let's have it be here why not why not? On our end level, we'll just need to move over to there. There we go. Perfect. Why is the offset like a weird number? <clears throat> That's why. Okay, never mind. Cool. All right, so now we have our exit. What are we going to do with the conveyor belts? Well, first of all, my question guess would be if I have a conveyor belt here and a conveyor belt here and we have a pitfall here I'm assuming as soon as the movable block hits the pitfall it's going in right also we need to add the uh, um conveyor belt we need to con no we don't have to configure that that's pressure plates we need to configure block we don't have to configure so let's just find the spawn point because it's down here and we'll move it up to here okay so spawn me i just want to see if the block will go directly into the why are you not moving now really really we had this working before and now the conveyor belt just just doesn't want to move. What happened to you, conveyor belt? What happened to you? Oh. <clears throat> right. We have to set the force that the uh, conveyor belt will be convening. So now it should work. There we go. All right, so it goes in, slams it into there, and there is... No errors. Okay, I, I was thinking perhaps since the item would be destroyed when it hits the uh, pitfall, it wouldn't get the last like stop momentum script that was happening. But I guess it, it's technically not leaving the uh, conveyor belt before that happens. So that's perfect. Okay. Sweet. Now we just got to build our level around this. Okay. So obviously we're going to want to have some like traps, right? Some things that are like, you're going to have to figure out where the conveyor belt's going in order to like do things. Let's first of all, check one more thing here. We're going to make a conveyor belt like this. Um, 
I just rotate? I hate this rotate mechanism. It, it's, it sucks. Okay. Um, we're going to call that one down. And down again. Now I just want to see how this one works. I know going directly into it from like one side works fine, but how does it work with the corners? Because I think before we were having issues with corners and stuff, right? Okay, so it still works. Excellent. Okay. I can have a bunch of conveyor belts kind of like convening to do things, right? And excellent, 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 excellent. Okay, so let's grab all of these conveyor belts. We're just gonna delete them to get them out of my face. Okay. So once again, how do I want to have this play out? Well, I think it would be nice. 90 is up, so negative 90 is what I want to have this be. I think it'd be cool if I just make a, like, area down here that stops the player from being able to get back. So the player's speed, if we remember, is three. And the conveyor belts do a force of two. But I can change the conveyor belts. So I can grab these and I can set the force to be four down. Which means they won't be able to get back after they go past there, or they shouldn't be able to. We'll have to double check that. But anyway, let's go to the tile palette real quick and seal off that little room. That and like that. Okay. And then let's grab a pitfall. And I think we'll just actually move this one. We'll just move it here. But we will need a box for that. And that one is going to be vertical. Now, if we were to hit play, I just want to check to see that all of these conveyor belts are going at the proper force. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, hmm. That's the thing in it. The speed of the conveyor belt does not match the animation now. If I, like, open up this and play, I was going at 30. What if I like, set it to 45? It goes faster. 60. Okay. So, what? How do I change this value? Can I change that value? I've never done that before. Let me open up the conveyor belts code. So if I were to do like animation anim and then do anim equals get component animation and then do anim dot sample. Might be able to do that. Okay. So let's grab this stuff. And let's add a awake. So when it wakes up, sample equals 10. Yeah. What, 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 what is sample? Um, samples animation occur. I don't assign nothing. Do I have to do like that? Or can I like that? No. Samples animations at the current state. Hmm. That's not what I want then. I thought because the animation says samples 30. Um, let me quickly Google this. Unity. How to change animation speed in code. Animator speed? What's saying? 
Instead of animation, I want to use animator, and then that, and it's anim dot. Um, animator dot speed equals so fuck okay well, let's just set force for now Okay. Except it needs to be force. Because right now we're using 30 samples, so it'd be, it'd be force times 15, right? To have the same like percentage of speed every time. I think. Set animation speed of the conveyor belt so that faster ones move faster. Smile. Okay. I think that's what I need to do. Let's check if it works though. So right now we have our conveyor belts down there that are moving at four force. So let's see what happens. Hmm. That affected all of them? Words? What is happening? So if I click animator, it shows the correct samples. What is what does speed do then? What, 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 is, what is speed? Animator speed manipulates the playback of animator. Any animation currently playing by the animator are slowed or sped up depending upon how the speed is altered. Set one for normal playback. Okay. So. One would equal two. Right? So one equals two. Um, so if I wanted it to. How do I do this then? Um, so would it be just force divided by two? Force divided by two. So that way if we have two force, it would be one. If we have four force, it would be two, which would double it, right? I think that's what we want, right? Okay, yeah, that looks good. Perfect. And then let's let's just manipulate these conveyor belts a little bit further, um, just to check. So if we have force of one and force of three, for example, we should still see a change, right? Yeah. So that one. Close to a crawl. That one's a little bit faster, and then that one is going ham. So perfect. Okay. I'll set these back to four. Cool. All right. With that, the variable script. Bye bye. And that's how you figure out a question you don't know the answer to. You just Google it. You just type in Google, like Unity, how to do this. And then there's a bunch of like answers of people also asking the same, or it'll direct you to the uh, the wiki for that particular thing, which in my case, it was, uh, what was it? It directed me to the Unity manual, the Unity documentation, which is docs.unity3d.com. 
and then took me to the animator dot speed um, suggestion there. So, and the second link was a stack overflow, which is also very helpful. You need to find code. So, that's fun. Okay. Let me just throw that back over there. Now then, I need to figure out what we're doing. So our, our goal is to get a block in any of these slots in order to fill this hole. Because if you put it, well, you can't put it there. You'd be screwed. You'd, you'd lock yourself out, literally. So that's funny. But one of these two slots is where you want it to go. So we're going to put a mobile blocks here and here to prevent you from going anywhere else. And at that point, we want to figure some stuff out. So what we could do is to actually show like what the conveyor belt system is capable of. We could have just a line of like movable blocks here that the player can use and then we grab our conveyor belt here we could start with like a bunch of different conveyor belts like this and we could also add some more blocking things here so that way the player has to, you know, throw these movable blocks. Let's actually move them, like, one more up. More space. Um, actually, no. That way there's more room to, like, maneuver them forward and stuff. So we do like that. That way the player can, you know, move them forward and move them up or down or wherever the heck they want to go with. And now, what they need to figure out is what block goes where. And they could also just completely screw themselves over, right? So here's what we'll do. We're going to take this, move it here, and go right. Oops, I meant to copy paste. There we go. I copied the wrong thing. That's what happens sometimes. We're going to do this. And then, you know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a change here real quick. So we're gonna name this conveyor belt right. Okay. Then let's go ahead and make a new one. I want this one to be negative 90 rotation. We're gonna call this conveyor belt down. but I'm not gonna use that one quite yet. Create a new one, just 90 rotation. This is gonna be conveyor belt up. That way I don't have to keep putting like names and stuff in there and whatnot. Okay. And then we want a conveyor belt left. Conveyor belt left, which is going to be uh, 180 rotation. And we need to, of course, change the direction that these are named. So, up, the down, the left. Let me just double check everything is properly named here. Up, left. Now, right, 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 right. This one. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. The rest of the conveyor belts are also named properly, right? Right, down, down. Down. Perfect. Okay. So now we have our directional conveyor belts. 
and we want to take a up conveyor belt. I want to move it right here. Then we want a right conveyor belt. I want to move it right there. And then let's take another right conveyor belt and put it over there. Then another one and put it there. Then we'll grab a down conveyor belt. Oops, that's another one, my bad. A down conveyor belt, and we'll put it right here. And we'll grab another right conveyor belt and put it over here. And we're just going to kind of make a uh, path, like a patchwork of, of different things, right? Let's do like this. Some of them won't even necessarily go anywhere. We're just kind of going to make like this entire area full of conveyor belts that don't necessarily do anything. So before I start um, going crazy with these, which conveyor belt are we going to use is the question. So let's go ahead and use the second conveyor belt right here. So we're going to complete this one, then we'll fill in the rest. And whether or not they complete or do anything, you know, doesn't matter, right? Okay, so grab that one, then we'll go up here, up, up, we don't need that one, never mind. And we want to go to the right again. We want to go down next. I think we'll just go down, 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 and down, right? Oh man, but if I do that, then the rest of them are just gonna like get stuck here and not be able to like cross over it. That's unfortunate. Or hmm. <laughs> I was thinking, what if I like speed up one to see if I can like shoot it across the conveyor belt like really fast? I don't know if that would work. I don't know if momentum happens with the blocks. Let's test it out. You, conveyor belt, force 50. What's it gonna look like? Holy crap. It's gonna be like a blur. Yep, it's a blur. Okay. Oop. Okay. Well, it just flung it over there. That's the thing, I guess. Maybe that one wasn't the best choice to do, right? What about this one? Since that one has one that goes up, we could use that to test it. If it goes past the one that goes up, we will know that it can get flung further. Nope, it just sticks. Also, it got stuck there? Hello? I'm going right too. How did it get stuck there? There ain't enough room, right? Between it ending and that, no, it, it should still be room for it to, like, go. With everything having normal values, let me just check to see what happens here. So it goes up, goes down, and then it gets stuck. Why? Why do you get stuck? Where's the movable board? Which one is it? Which one are you? You, 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 you piece of shit. You, you. We're able to change X is two. That's the total change. But why was zero? So if I just drop that down here, so it, it worked until it 
it's this area. So I need like two before anything else changes, don't I? Okay. I can't just have it be like that. Well, shit. So it works up to here. Let's get rid of that. Let's copy this, put it down here. See if that works. The conveyor belts are janky. Yeah, okay, so I think it's, if they if they turn too sharply, that it's just not going to work. You know what, let's take this conveyor belt. And let's get a left conveyor belt. Get it into there. Let's make this like six force. Go ahead and just get rid of all of these. Screw it. We'll restart. Get rid of these ones too. Okay. So it moves up, goes around, goes down. Then let's grab some right conveyor belts. Right, right. And we'll go up, up. Up, and then we'll go right again. Right, right. Then we can go down all the way. Down, 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 and down. Okay. That way. It'll always go to the correct spot. Okay. Next, now that we have our... Well, let, let's test it first. We need to make sure. Uh-oh. I did something. What did I do? What happened there? A null exception for loading screen GM has not been assigned. What? No audio listen. What what happened? I didn't change anything, did I? Wait, where's the main camera? Huh? Did I somehow delete the main camera? getting errors though. What errors am I getting? GM loading screen was not assigned. What? What the f what? Did I do something? Hold on. We're just gonna... Where's the main camera? I deleted the GUI somehow? Holy shit. Okay, so don't drag and delete. So now I have two cameras, so I don't have to go bye bye. Let's clear the errors. Loading screen GUI has not been assigned because I destroyed the GUI, so I have to redo everything. So pause menu. Menu. 
Man, just deleting one thing screwed up so much stuff for us. Okay, so pause menu. There's the settings panel. Confirm quit panel. Confirm main menu panel. We got the loading panel. The timer. Anything else that needs to be like assigned anything again. That's everything. Let's hit play again. Okay, we're not getting any errors. Perfect. Yeah, apparently just doing that also deleted this little thing here. Whatever this is. Oh, it's the uh, SFX. You know what? Uh, GM, I'm going to move you like over here. Gooey, you shoot. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't really believe the main camera at this point. Idiot. Jesus. Okay. How many things are selected here? Four? Perfect. Okay. And they should be selected. Jesus. That was a thing and a half to deal with. Okay. Three things are selected. Perfect. Delete those. Just make sure the force on this is good. Okay. Build a force of six. I'm thinking that way the slime character won't be able to just run up past that. Just kind of get screwed, right? Okay, so. More timeless hip play and make sure that it works. Okay, so we push the block onto the conveyor belt. Goes and goes and goes. Boop. There we go. And then we also take a ride on the conveyor belt. Yay! Okay. It's easy. Oops. I'll actually move this one, sorry. There we go. All right. So we're just gonna create some chaos here, like that. And then let's grab some rights. Like this. If anyone who takes the time to like look at, at these, we'll definitely be able to tell like, oh, I know where that's going exactly. That's fine. And what would have to really do? Next, let's grab the the up conveyor belt. Let's take this one, and I'm going to move that up here. I'm going to grab a another down conveyor belt, put it over here. Actually, I messed up right there, because that also leads to victory, so this one has to change. Actually, what if I just make this one an up?
Okay. This one goes here, here, here. Yeah, I'll have to test all these out anyway, just in case they clip into other ones and cause chaos. Um, and then let's grab a right one and a right one. Let's grab a down one and let's put it here. some downs. Actually, let's go right here again. Right, right, ah, ah. right, and then we'll go down again. Down, down, then let's go left. Left, 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 left. Left, 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 le, 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 left, 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 another one, and we want to go just down again, go down, 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 and that's a wasted cube, perfect, okay, we'll add a couple more here, this is going to be just a huge mess of a level, but it's going to be neat, I think. Let's add a right here. Let's grab a left and put it here, because why not? It'd be funny. Let's grab a down and put it here. And here. And here. Okay. So now we just need to see. I think this will be it for that. I don't want to cause a bunch more chaos here. Um, we need to, of course, delete these ones that are up here. Uh, let's test them all out, see what happens. So we know the, the second one is the correct one, so let's just make sure that one still works. All these, and it does not, because it hits that one, of freaking course. Let's delete that one. We'll just go through and like remove the ones that we have to in order to make it work. And that one gets stuck on it too, so okay. What if I add like some blocks in here? You know, actually, I'll do that to all the uh, open area. I'll see how it goes. Send that one on its way. Yeah, of course it gets stuck by that one. Okay, let's just check the top one and see what happens with it. Why did it get stopped? That's fine. You know what? That's fine. Okay, it's fine. Not happy about it, but it's fine. Maybe it's because of that block. We need to remove that one and then get rid of this one. We'll add a block in there. See how it goes. Off you go. It got stuck. Okay. Wait, why did that go left? Why did it go left? What? Why did it go left? Oh, I'm bored. Get variables are so janky. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Where did we? Lose it. We lost it here because of that. 
down conveyor belt here. Okay. The rest of the ones not making it are fine. I just need to figure out the one that actually makes it. I just need to make sure that as we send this on, it will get where it needs to go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. That one worked. Let's check the other conveyor belts, except for the top one, because that one's never going to freaking work because it's a jerk. Because it's, all, it's scrunched up like that. But again, why does it go that way? Why? Why? Why does it go left? There's nothing left here. Let's try the third one here. So it goes down, down, up, and it goes back. You know what? Let's remove this one. Add a block. That way at least we go down here and... You know what? That actually looks really gosh darn cool. I'm just gonna make a circle. Um, I need this one here. There you go. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and send this. Let's just make sure that what we did here did not mess up our proper working block. Looks like it's gonna work, so that's fine. Okay. Let's check out the second clip through the bottom there. Did it get stuck? Perfect. That's hilarious. We'll try out this one next. I don't even know how that worked. Um, actually, I don't know how it worked. Because this one's velocity is hella freaking fast. It's using that one, that's why. Okay. Okay. And once again, this one, which I do not know why it goes that way. Okay, so this one I want to set back to two. Um, this one also is at six, so let's set that one back to two. I think all my lefts are basically set to six because I copied that other one. Yep. Okay. For this one. Maybe I just do that. Shorten that one's hitbox. Let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah, I'm getting all the boxes. Ugh. Send that one on its way. Send that one. You son of a bitch. Why are you doing that? We'll send this one around its happy-go-lucky little turn pile. This one we'll send up here, which then gets back down there for whatever reason. Okay, you block. Why? You're, you're moving in zero, zero right now. You go there, but... Oh god. Oh gods. Okay. Two, four... What? Why did it go... So it goes negative two here at some point. Well, why does it hit negative two for conveyor belt change? So it goes over here. Hold on. Is there a shortcut to pause? I don't know if there is. No. Okay. Pause. Okay. So right now, we are at 2, 4. 2, 4. Slowly we're moving. Okay. Can we have a change? Total has gone to 6 for the positive value. Which would be to the right, because we hit that one's conveyor belt. Okay. 
We then get off of those two, which for some reason set our conveyor change to negative two, but then really quickly switches back to two, but then back to negative two, and then to two, and then to negative two, and then it just goes off and does its thing until we leave this one. You move right. You move right. You move right. You move up. There's no left around here. Why are we getting negative two? Conveyor belt script, open up. So, on enter 2D, doesn't matter. On exit. So, when we exit, we, if it is the player, we do this, which doesn't matter. Move a little block. We do this. Right? Yeah. But if the block leaves, it's going to change the force. It says, if that's like that. So... This line? Because this is the movable block game object. And we take its total conveyor change and we add it. But if. I was being told to go right, right? Did I mess this up? X, X, Y, Y. X, X, Y, Y. Let me just double check here. Block. If we move you to the right, we are changing your X value. Do I have these backwards? I do. This should be X. That should be X. This should be Y. This should be Y. Be X. This should be X. I don't know how I like managed to have these working while also having them not working. Y Y X X. I'll have to do them for the uh, other slime thing too. So. Y, X, X, and Y, Y, X, X. Now we need to check the enter as well because I may have messed that up there. So Y, Y, X, X, Y, Y, X, X, Y, Y, X, X. Okay, so the, the entering was fine. It's just the exiting that was causing issues, which makes sense. Well, now that we've changed that, let's make sure that our block still... Yeah. It just threw everything off now. Everything is just ruined now with the conveyor belts. Holy crap. No! Okay. That freaked me out. I forgot the uh, the background music for the game is also in the playlist, and I was like, didn't I unpause? Why am I still hearing the music? <sighs> okay. Shit. Okay. 
I guess that's what I get for having conveyor belts next to each other like that. Um, so I guess what I could do is I can move this up, move this up, take this block and move it down. I could get rid of that and that. Copy that, copy that. Then we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty sure it's still going to get messed up by other things, but we shall see. It goes, and then it, it, it gets stuck. What if I don't have these anymore? Maybe that's what's causing some issues. Okay, I thought I might have deleted the camera there or something. Oh my god, please. Well, thank god I found this out, like... Did I just fucking delete the GUI again? Son of a bitch! How do I keep doing that?! can't see, but I'm giving the uh, computer a finger now, so. Right. Hey, 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 gooey. Can I move you to like 100, 100? I don't think that helps. Yeah, wow. I, uh, I clicked here and it was like, oh, canvas? You want the canvas? <laughs> no, you know. You're right there. Just look at the canvas again right there. Why? Oh, wait. No, I moved the GM to 100 of 100. Okay, where's it at? GM, where'd you go? Okay. So I don't know if, if, if I move this, this GUI, if I move it to like 100, 100. Will that do anything? No. Okay. Some values are driven by canvas. Right, can, I, can I just fucking get this out of the way? I guess I could just like hide the canvas. <sighs> you know what? There's also the fucking timer that was there, which I had to move over. And actually, I feel like I've deleted the text box as well at some point. So, uh, is that still there? Nope. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, deleted the text box too somehow. <sighs> which, which means I've probably deleted the text box for all of these. Oh no, those are still fine. I guess because it was hidden, right? God, I hate that. So I, I cannot move the canvas, apparently. I cannot tell it to just get the hell out of the way. So I don't accidentally click on it. That is just so fucked. I mean, I could just like move this entire thing like negative 50, negative 50, just what's out of the way. But then I'd have to make everything like different. Do that. So I guess I'll just have to be very careful with what I'm selecting and deleting. All this stuff that's not like even touching the border here. Like that one just touched the fucking thing. I have to click it three times to get through the GUI. It's all messed up. Okay. Let's try this now and see how it is without the uh, things. Oh, 
Why did you do that? It's like it didn't reset the zero thing. Hey you. What are what are what are what 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 are we doing here? Pause. Okay, so we're currently still moving Y. We are still moving Y. Why are we still moving Y? What did I mess up? Why, why? Why, 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 why? Why, why? I think I understand. So we're taking the movement vector and we're we're adding this force to it, which makes this zero, which means this doesn't happen, which means it does not take that away from that, which makes sense. <sighs> which means we need to add some logic here. So, we need to check if the y value does not equal zero. I guess we just do or. Hmm. I'm thinking of how to do this. I could do an else, I guess. Like, Should I be changing that first? Yes, but... Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Let me think. So. Notepad. So we start out with zero to zero. That's what we go in with. When we leave, we have the TCC, which is going to be zero, zero, zero at that point. So we're changing that. And we're going from zero to zero to that, right? And then the conveyor change is changing from zero to zero to zero, 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 right? That's what we're trying to do with, uh, if, if there's no Y. I think I think I know what I gotta do. Hold on. I'm just gonna make some real quick vector threes. Vector three. Um
Wait, would that? Mm -hmm. No, I can't do that here. Unfortunate. Okay. Um. What I'm gonna have to do, and I know this is the player right now, but that's fine. So we take this. It is zero. However, there is the possibility that it could still change. So if it's if it's not zero. I mean, it's not zero, we don't really want to do anything, right? Fuck. Okay. If y is zero, we do that. Right? But if y is not zero, I'm, I'm lost, hold on. I completely forgot what, what the issue was. Let me hit play again. Move this guy over here. Pause. Okay. Right two. Moving it along. It's at two two. Perfect. That's what it should be. It goes over here. It's still at two two for some reason. It hits the next one, which upgrades that to two two. But whatever. And then goes over here where it gets rid of that. Okay, so this is the problem right here, is that it got rid of the Y, but did not change the conveyor change value. So, because conveyor change, that is now zero. Right. Oh my god, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. What am I doing? Why am I having such a hard time thinking about this? My brain just, just does not want to work right now. <sighs> okay. Let's just take the up direction for now. Which is this, the two and the two, okay? So, when we leave, we need to take the total conveyor change and we need to remove two from it. That's fine. We then check if the total conveyor change does not equal zero. We then want to take the movement vector is two. Do I actually want to do that? I don't think I want to. Not for removing values, right? I think I just want to always add a remove, right? I think the positive only matters for the Yeah, so I think <clears throat> I think this only matters if we're adding the value. So if we just remove all of this. Wait, this is the player. I don't want to mess with the player right now. We're gonna do this block here, so let's get rid of that. We were testing with a block, so if this works with a block, we can then apply it to everything, and then if not, we can cry a little bit. Okay, we'll save that. I don't know why that was messing with my brain. Okay, so now then, let's hit play. Now, if this works, the conveyor belt should stop doing things immediately. And then we hit zero for some reason. What did you do? Hmm. 
Ah. Right. Because if there's multiple in there, I don't want to do that. But... When did that happen? When did that happen? Awesome. Okay. Right, two, two. Perfect. Go up here. We hit the second conveyor belt, which goes us to two, four. Perfect. We get out of the up conveyor belt, which gets us to zero, zero, which is perfect. Then we go across here, and then we hit past that conveyor belt. Which... So as we leave the second conveyor belt, we go to that, which means it seems like the first one is not bleeding off. What I want to do in that case is now we're having an issue with the right one, right? So let's focus on the right one for right now. So we go through here. Let's say we have a total change of two. We'll just go over here for a little notepad. So we have two is going to be our change. Our Thing is currently moving at four, zero, zero. So the first change is going to be two, right? And this should still be what we are going to be in the next movement, right? So this is going from the first one after we're off the first conveyor belt going on to a second conveyor belt, right? Now, because that happened, we went down one. Okay. And then what we tried to do here is we then subtracted two from them again. Right. Which would then give us from two, it would go to zero, two, or zero, and then zero, zero, right? That's as we leave that one under there, right? But at the same time, we just entered another one. But technically, we should still be at 2-2. Two, two. Or 2, yeah, 2-2 two, two for those. This one should still be 2. Am I really overthinking this? Like, am I, am I being really stupid? I think we're gonna have to brute force this a bit, so let's uh let's do this. So 
if mb dot total conveyor change dot y equals zero we know that we need to make the conveyor change go down so we need to do this however is that what i want is that all i need to do I think it is all I need to do, to be honest. <sighs> Oops, not cut, paste, paste, paste. And I just need to change these X to Ys. Okay, now let's test it. Because before I was checking if they're not equal to zero. Like originally, but now, uh, then I was just adding regardless of what happened. But now I'm. Okay. 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 All right. Excellent. The issue <clears throat> for looking between these two is that I was checking for not equal to zero when I should have been looking for equal to zero. Okay. So let's redo these. And of course, we need to redo the enemy ones down here as well. God, that, that took me way longer than it needed to to figure out. I just want to throw that out there. Ugh. Like, it should not have taken me that long to figure out that. I, I, I don't know why my brain was just like, uh. Maybe because I'm all logic out from uh, playing with so many blocks and stuff. Here we go. Get moving. So that one, it should go all the way around, and then it should get stuck there. Yeah. Is it raining out? How dare it? I was going to go for a walk after this. I guess I have an umbrella. I can do that. But ugh, walking in the rain? All right, let's just test the rest of these, make sure that they still work. Hmm. Well, that one didn't. What the fudge? How about this one? Wait, what is even this one doing? What? This one goes up there, so it would... It would actually go down here, and then, oh yeah, it gets stuck there. That's what the... That was, that's what that one does. Okay, well... That's fine. It's kind of what we want to have happen anyway. So. God. Maybe I remove a couple of these things here. I give you a three to play with. <laughs> that way you have to choose wisely. Because if you mess up, you gotta reset the level. Nice. Okay. Yes. And people might think, oh, that was the obvious one, because it's kind of like, you know, it's just off by itself, right? Would it help or hinder if I add these back in? And by help or hinder, I mean, would it, like, help them have a piece of, a frame of reference so that they can be like, oh, okay, so this one is going to uh, do that. Oops. I just want to make sure that the things still work. You know, I guess I understand why that one gets stuck, because if it's hitting all those at once, like, it, it's just gonna, if we uh, actually go to this one, collect it. Yeah, I don't know why that still has two there. And that one is zero, but it shouldn't.
because the only time the conveyor chain should be zero is if the total conveyor chain is zero, right? This is the only time we would do that. But if it does ever get set to zero and it's on another, or it hits another conveyor belt, it should do that. But I think, I think because of how it is right here, we're kind of touching that one and that one. I don't know. Yeah, just get stuck. That's fine. That is okay. I guess what I could do. I could move that one to be a left direction. What happened to the bottom one again? Where did it get stuck? Let's just test the bottom too. See what happens. Yeah, it gets just stuck there. And this one, it will get stuck also there. But, oh, go down a little further. You could, I guess, brute force it if you uh, put all three blocks on the bottom conveyor belt, because that would then force it down again, which would. Awesome. Okay. So I look right now, this block is going nowhere. Why is it going nowhere? It should be in here, so it should be going up, right? Or I guess because they canceled each other out? Yeah, that's what happened. They canceled each other out. Anyway, we put another block on here. You know what, let's just do it. Having multiple solutions to a puzzle is not always a bad thing, so it's fine. We push this one. It goes bloop, bloop, bloop. That one goes down. And hey, you got a victory. And we can also get on this one. Go over here. That one also push down there, but we can go down here too. And then we kind of screw ourselves, so... It's fine. Okay. That's done. Okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's hit save. Now, we just need to throw everything where it belongs. So we have one pitfall trap. It's in there. We have three movable blocks. So one, two, three. Let's just uh, go to prefabs. To three. Then we need to make some spawn points. Create empty. Block spawn. Toss those three there. Toss those three there. Okay. And we just gotta position these bad boys. There. And there. Okay. I'm curious about one thing. What happens if I just go by myself? Okay. But what if I were to go down here first and then go over this way? Oh, oh, you can cheat. Oh. So maybe I put a block here so that they can't go that way. Although that one is so easy to see now that it just goes down to there. So it just eliminates that one and you're like, okay. It's gonna be one of these three then. And two of them actually work if you put all the same blocks on it. Also, I guess since you can move on the conveyor belts, 
it also uh, it also just means that you could go on the conveyor belt select, for example. Funny. Funny, 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 funny. You can do this. And then you can just come on the conveyor belt. Be like, oh, you're stuck? Now you're not, motherfucker. Victory. I mean, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. We'll let the player do that. We're not gonna be jerks and say you can't do that. Let them have fun. Let them let them have different, you know, ways to solve the puzzle, right? Okay. Basically, all you have to do is get the thing in the hole there, and you're done. It's just it's conveyor belts. Okay. First conveyor belt level finished. We do have to uh, add some stuff. Okay, hold on for now. All right, so here, end level. Next level's right there. Save. Okay, level eight now. So level seven for text, we have, will you fare any better? Okay. Next for our dialogue, we shall say, Not bad. Now, let's add in a new element. Something outside your control. These platforms will move anything on them. You will need to think ahead. Okay. I think we'll just do two there. That's fine. Okay. All right, cool. So we made... Did we make level three today? Did we? I can't remember. I cannot remember which one we started to make today. I know we had one and two finished. Did we make three, four, five, six, seven? I know we at least made level four today. But I feel like we may have made three as well. I think we did. We made one, two, three, four, five, six levels today? Not bad. Not bad. Which means if we have 50 levels and we've already done eight of them, Divided by six means we have another week left and we'll be done with all the levels. Of course, it's not going to be that easy. And uh, there might be other things that come up as things get more complicated and we start adding the levers, the slime, and all that kind of stuff that we have to deal with. Um, things could go smoother. They could go could take longer. Who's to say? But we will be wrapping things up for today, everyone. So thank you all for watching and whatnot. And next time... We're going to continue building levels and stuff. So I think next time we may not have to do much extra work. How's it going, Mellow Echo? Welcome. I'm actually ending stream, so I can't pie, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, so really all we have left to do for the game is make levels. Uh, maybe add some other stuff to it and whatnot. But for right now, this is kind of everything that I can think of to have. I could potentially add more stuff later and add it in for the like later levels of the game. But I think for right now, we'll be okay for a couple more levels, right? So we uh, we updated our lever, our, our pressure plate stuff. We fixed an issue with the conveyor belt. That was going to be a huge issue going down the line. So now uh, we did a lot of good stuff. There's one last thing we actually have to do, which is load up Game World and throw in our newly designed levels or I forget, because I would. So I, I do remember putting level three in here before, so perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then I'll just save and unload that scene. All right. All right. Cool. So that's it for every. <clears throat> excuse me. That's it for everything today. My voice is starting to die. But uh, next time we'll continue to build more levels, and. 
I think we want to finish level 1-10, 1-9, without using any new elements. Um, and then, when 1-2 comes around, we'll start adding in pressure plates and levers, and uh, I don't want to use the red slime right away. I think adding it in 3-something, or 4-something, potentially could be helpful. So, uh, that way it would add like, extra difficulty curve, right? But uh, for now, everyone, that's all. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.